Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California. This is the Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, SNL writer Hugh Fink. With Gina Grad on news, Paul Bryan on sound effects, and we'll go over some trending topics with Chris Loxamana. And now, one year ago, everything changed. Well, not for him, but everything changed. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice but got a mandate to get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grad? That's right. Handball, Brian. Turbo Negro. Oh, boy. We uh, took some uh, SNL bits that Hugh Fink has written over the years and uh, gave them to uh, Brian because he's kind of the in-house expert here. So we'll get into Ugh. some of those bits i'm familiar with the era too like hugh fink presided over a uh, a really good era for snl that was right on the heels of i i saw um an interview with robert smigel talking about the sort of early to mid 90s snl when the wheels kind of came off the later sandler years david spade you know all those guys towards the end of their run the, the show kind of fell apart a little bit and was struggling and uh smigel himself was like yeah those were not the best 22 episodes we ever produced which is a nice way of saying that was a shitty season and then uh hugh fink i assume came on the scene i want to talk to him about this in like 95 with will ferrell and on a gas tire and on and on and on molly shandon and that great cast and totally revitalized the show save the show honestly well we'll talk to hugh about that and uh beyond I was uh, thinking about cats and dogs and not getting along. Go on. And, you know, you always hear, oh, you know, it's the end of the world. Cats and dogs are living in harmony Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But um, I'm a a big cat fan. Me too. But I blame cats. Oh, no. So I really think about most dogs and most cats. I'm, I'm loosely basing it on, I understand the war is on now. It's sort of uh, Palestine and Israel, mm-hmm. but I still feel like I lean toward Israel. Yeah. I feel like Israel are the dogs, which is that eh, if you just want to get along, we could get along, but uh, cats will not allow it. <laughs> and I'm basing it on our cat at the other shop. Shelby. Who, Shelby, who's always laying down on a sofa, reclining mm-hmm. at some point, it, sort of having a rub my belly, kind of come hither look. Yes. But whenever I go over to rub Shelby's belly, the claws, he always swats my hand with the claws, and I realize... Phil would never do that. I don't no. think you can call Jews uh, dogs in certain parts of the world. I think that's it a is real derogatory. Insult, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's it just the analogy. Well. <laughs> I I put my whole face into Shelby, and I couldn't breathe or see for the rest of the day because I'm highly allergic. Worth but re- it. remember, it is worth it. She's still a kitten. Does that give her any leeway? Yeah, but uh, but she, she's a cat. I guess. I just say that the dogs seem a little more curious. <laughs> And the cats a have, a, have a little more spite in their in oh, their veins. Right. So right. um, I just think you know I got to choose a side. Oh boy! Between cats and dogs, and choose Israel. I do. I I think uh, <laughs> okay, I, the dogs. Yeah. I think the dogs are you know you know they're it, they're not you know they're not all victims, right. but in general they would like to live in harmony with cats. Yeah, they go along to get along. I think cats are going to permit that. Yeah, that's all. Just okay. a thought. All right, uh, we were. Uh, Combing through some of the uh, Bircham bits from 25 <laughs> years ago. God, over 25 years ago. And uh, we pulled up another one from July 1994. This is uh, when I used to call in to Kevin and Bean. This one is uh, titled what, Max Pata? Uh, I, I believe it's called Penis and Vacuum Tips. Penis <laughs> and Vacuum Tips. All right, here we go. Hey, hey great sentiment. Thanks for the call. All right. Bye. You've never told a caller great sentiment before, I don't think. That's the first. No, that's the first. Do we have time for one I've more? I've answered uh, hundreds of phone calls with Bean, and that's the first great sentiment ever. I think you may be right. Uh, would this be Mr. Bertram? Yeah. Hey, uh, Mr. Bertram, how are you? Uh, fellas, <laughs> let me tell you, my pride is hurt. Well, Mr. Oh. Mr. Bertram is a shop teacher in Los Angeles uh, Unified, and I guess you're doing some part-time work in the summer, and you call us, and there's always a problem whenever you call. We know you've been injured. And what, what seems to be the trouble today? It's like I got a shadow over my life. It's I like know. I'm cursed, I'm telling you. I feel fine physically, but I, I hurt inside, fellas. Well, what happened, Mr. B? Oh, uh, my wife picked up, the, took the kids, and went to her sister's place. It was, uh, it was all a horrible misunderstanding. Oh, Max now, Patty, you're, you're not, you're, you're not well, playing the right call, I don't think. Although we yeah, can hear this call anyway, but... 
This is uh this is not well we'll play this one we, out. We, this is no not no we the, have it. That, that you're you're right. That wasn't we'll just right. play this one out. We're into it anyway. Well we have the other one. Do you want I understand okay, that, okay. Chris. That's why I keep saying just play it anyway. I told you guys about the time I was putting up the Z flash and using the Hilti powder actuated pin driver. Right. Anyway, the nail. Oh, wait All a your minute. stories now, kinda, now kinda we, get mixed. Something happened, Max Pena. Well, I think both clips you went to your sis or your wife went to her sister's place oh really yeah i think that's what i think that's what that's what happened oh is that what happened we, yeah so for the listeners adam and i listened to these both and they they both i didn't listen off. to both of them i just listened oh, to that's the right. first I, one yeah i think both of them uh yeah your your wife went to her sister's oh, place so that might have been a, a device you used. oh okay we're right. waiting sorry there sorry it is. go back 10 <laughs> seconds now all right that's why i'm confused up that took the kids and went to her sister's place. It was uh, it was all a horrible misunderstanding. Yeah, what was the under- misunderstanding? Well, I told you guys about the time I was putting up the Z flash and using the Hilti powder actuated pin driver. Right. Anyway, the nail. <laughs> all your stories kind of kind of get mixed together though, Mr. Burton. To be honest, I'm not sure I remember that specific story. <laughs> well, you'll remember it. All right. All right. You'll remember it because uh, the nail goes in, catches a piece of number eight rebar, and comes back at me. Yeah. All right. Now, right up the uh, yeah. In my trigger finger, right. my arm gets lodged in my urethra. <laughs> <laughs> right. you know, naturally, the doc says leave it. Sure, uh, your course. doctor always says that. By the way, the, the guy just doesn't believe in surgery for anything. The guy's Mister Hands Off. He don't want to get his hands dirty. Too busy golfing. Oh, uh, I understand. Sure. <laughs> well, anyway, he said it would pass. Yeah, all right. Well, that was two months ago, and the thing hasn't budged. All right. I can't relieve myself without destroying the bathroom. No. The wizard's coming out like wiper spray. No, we don't need <laughs> this kind of detail. Hand towels, magazines, decorative soap, nothing safe. Oh, um, no, please. Well, uh, listen, I'm building up to something. Yeah. Okay. This is about my wife. Yeah. Misunderstanding. Well, oh, oh, so the accident isn't what you called? No, no, it's not what I called. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Now, last night, after a couple of beers, I decided enough was enough. I went out to the garage, I dropped my dickies, and I hooked myself up to the shop back. Yeah. Oh, now, Mr. Bertram. Well, next thing you know, the garage door opens, and there's my wife, kid, in a van full of weebelos. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been an embarrassing moment for you. It was just no talking to her after that. <laughs> yeah. But that's not why I called. Uh, why did you call, Jeez. Mr. Bertram? I heard about that guy got his hunker caught in a jacuzzi inlet out in Florida. Yeah, the guy in Florida went into the swimming pool in the middle of the night and I guess was using the pool vac and uh, got stuck. They had to call 911. It was ugly. Yeah. I got a message for this joker. Yeah. Hey, Florida's got enough trouble with tourism these days without help from nutcases like you. Right. Well, what if a busload of Japanese had pulled up while you were humping the hot tub? <laughs> Is that the way you want them to remember their trip to the States? What do you got crap in your head, buddy? You can't pull off a stunt like that unless you restrict the airflow to the intake valve. Uh, usually by shoving a towel in the cleaner trap, which will be located on the pump side of the filter. You know a lot about this. Huh? I said you know a lot about this, it sounds like. Uh, I read a lot of manuals. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> so that's it. You shove a towel in on that side, and then you can make that work? Uh, a buddy of mine told me that. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he did. <laughs> always, always a delight and great sentiment, Mr. Bertram. All right. <laughs> See oh, yeah. All right. Well, now we got another one where my wife... <laughs> left town for reasons. Real quick, I love the detail of instead of saying Boy Scouts, you went with Weeblos. <laughs> Always good to be specific. I love that. Yeah, and I re- do realize he, he could have tried to get a nail removed from his urethra of the shop vac, but yeah. there would be no explaining that to the <laughs> van, the people in the right. van, right? That was goddamn good radio. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, it was always the same thing. Started with some sort of problem and then went on into some fix-it thing. That's not and why the, I called. The automatic <laughs> laugh is, is, that's not why I called. <laughs> I think I, after all the detail you just went into for three minutes. Well, thanks. Awesome, Dawson. Great. All right, we'll play this one from April. April of 94? That must have been one of my first Bircham. April 94 is what it says? Yeah, that's what I'm. I that's when I started. That was like the very that was the very beginning of Bircham. 
Oh, right. wait. Let me oh, wait. No, oh, never wait. mind. <laughs> oh, May no. of 94. No. Uh, May, still. May 2nd. May 2nd. Yeah, but still. Still the right after the... Remember, I was turning 30 in May of 94, mm-hmm. so my whole plan was I had to do something before my right. 30th birthday, and that's, I, that's why I know this thing hit moments before I turned 30. All right, May of 94, wife leaves town again. <laughs> All right, that's coming up a little bit later, but first it's uh, Tuesday, and that means our favorite shop teacher, Mr. Burcham, is on the phone. Hey, Mr. B. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Man, it sounds like you got something up you right now. Oh, uh, well. You sound terrible. I actually, no, I'm, I'm an emotional pain. Fellas, I hurt inside. What's the story? Well, my, my wife left, went to stay with her sister. No big surprise there, though, really, is it? Well. Well, that's common, though. A lot of, a lot of sisters are close, and they'll get together for a few days a year. She lives in Nebraska. <laughs> did she? Does she have a return ticket, or did she just go? No, she just took off. I, I tell you what, I blame it on K Rock. No, well, how do you do that? Well, you know, last night when it started last night, yeah, the wife went to her uh, Overeaters Anonymous meeting, <laughs> and uh, I got bored, you know, so I decided to try out something. You know that Madeline from the K Rock sales department gave me. What's that? What did she give you? That stuff called herbal ecstasy. <laughs> yes. She said it make me feel good. Anyway, I took a double the recommended dose and washed it down with a fifth of apricot schnapps. <laughs> right. Anyway, the OA meeting broke up early. My wife and her husky sponsor walked in on me dry humping the beanbag chair. <laughs> oh, that is bad. And she couldn't have been happy about that. No, no. Uh, it's It's... It's never satisfying as a woman to see your husband mounting a uh, ottoman. <laughs> Although it sounds like uh, from from just past uh, things that you've said that it's about the same sensation. No, oh, yeah. All right. All right, now, but listen, that's not why I called, fellas. All right, why'd you call? Well, yesterday I got a parking ticket, you know. Right. We're parking between noon and two on a street sweeper day. Mm-hmm. And here's the deal. Now you got to really pay attention to the signs in this town because they're very specific like that. I know. Hey, it's ludicrous, though, because I parked at 145. It was after the street cleaner had already made its pass, and the bastards wrote me up anyway. They don't wow. care about that, huh? They just didn't want to see you there before, too. Well, first of all, who decides these street sweepers need a two-hour window? <laughs> Get these flunkies on some kind of schedule. For Christ's sake, it's not like they're piloting the shuttle. <laughs> they're driving a broom. <laughs> it's a big broom. Yeah, it is. I'm telling you, these parking enforcement guys are carbuncles on the ass of society. <laughs> I cursed them in the Chevette they rode in on. <laughs> and don't tell me, fellas, these guys don't have ticket quotas. Of course they do. How else do you explain a city employee actually doing his job? That's, That's a good, good point. question. Yeah. You know damn well if they didn't have these quotas, these guys would be sitting in the car with the engine running, smoking and eating donuts all day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't believe me, head on over to the post office of the DMV and have a look at this city employee in its natural habitat. <laughs> Guys are moving like sloths on a hot day. No quotas there, my friend. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of the listeners are saying, Mr. Burcham, leave them alone. They're just doing their job. Well, maybe they're right. And maybe we shouldn't have gone after these Nazi war criminals. <laughs> after all, they were just following orders. <laughs> what about this Tex Watkins? He was only doing what Manson told him to do. <laughs> what about that nice lad, David Berkowitz? Isn't it his dog who we should blame? <laughs> After all, it was the dog that told him to kill. <laughs> These people deserve as much crap as we can dish out. Yeah. I say we get rid of all of them, and we go back to parking enforcement the way it used to be. Old lesbians on three-wheel Harleys. Yeah. All right, fellas. <laughs> you had a lot to get off your chest today. Well, these tick. It's 330 bucks for a handicap ticket. You got one of those, too? I got one last week. I'm going to hobble myself just to get in the court. <laughs> Listen, what? good luck with, uh, with Mrs. B. I hope she turns up. Oh, yeah, she'll be back. <laughs> how, you, could, how could she not? You're, you're such a catch. Hi, <laughs> right, right. Mr. Burcham. Thanks. Yeah. Talk to you later. Yeah. Do you guys remember the three wheel oh, yeah. Harleys yeah. and Cushmans? They remember used to... they'd tap the they they'd tap the uh, the, the the tire with like chalk. The chalk, a yeah, chalk, chalk the tire, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they chalked. Oh my god! You know what I'd like to? You know we uh, there's a series. They always do those series like 
great inventors or the men who changed America, Mm -hmm. who built the Golden Gate Bridge or who invented the iPhone or whatever it is. We should do one where we punish people, like the guy who invented the Denver boot. Sure. We yeah. We just punished the shit out of guys who had all the fucking horrible yes. inventions. That we went with. Oh, and we tell him it's to honor him. Like, come on our show, we'll honor you. He shows up, which is bad. Yeah, the Denver sticks. boot, you, you could get all the chalk you wanted on your tire. I used to see cars that had like sergeant stripes yep. of chalk going all the way around the tire. But before the Denver boot, people would just cares? drive away. What I always did was I would just move like up like four inches and that way you wouldn't be able to see the chalk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, didn't everybody do that? Uh, no, Gene, I was an honest Parker. <laughs> oh, God, you're such a weevilo. I didn't even have, like, the truck registered in my name for, like, the first four years I drove around. So I didn't even know if I paid a parking ticket or had <laughs> oh. a parking ticket. But it used to be devastating. Do you remember the, remember the terror of driving around without current tags? Oh, you know, like, like you're like I, I like you. You can't go near the airport. There's cops everywhere. But right, like, like right. I, 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 I need to be careful. I, I had on a swivel. Yeah, uh, I, I, the terror of driving around with a warrant. I drove around with a warrant <laughs> and then uh, eventually got arrested. But um, I mean, that was Jeez. warrant. warrant. <laughs> that was uh, that was on a motorcycle. Wait, did you have a bench warrant? How did you get arrested? Did they just come find you? It, it, it is a Corolla Christmas classic, which is, I was about 19 or 18 and a half. I was working for Hoffman Travel. They were on Ventura Boulevard. Um, I was lamenting. I was, I was saying to my mom, I had a warrant to my mom and my stepdad because I thought they would, they might pay for it. Have you, had I you know. met them at this point? Say, they had I know. Years of experience. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, mom." Desperate. No, I, I guess if if Sonny came to me when he was nineteen and he was like, "I have a warrant for a bunch of parking tickets and stuff, and uh, I shall be arrested if I get pulled over, but I don't have any money to pay yeah. the warrant because I just got this job, but now I'm scared to ride right. my motorcycle back and forth." The job. You work something out. I would say, uh, how much is it? Mm-hmm. And then I'd probably go, I'll pay it. And then every paycheck you get, yeah. you give me $40. Right. A little and garnish. After the first 80 bucks, I'd probably forget about it and we'd get on with our lives. Yeah. But I, I laid it out to my mom and my stepdad. And I said, uh, I said, uh, yeah, it's Ventura Boulevard, and there's cops all over Ventura mm-hmm. Boulevard. I got to ride my motorcycle into Ventura Boulevard every morning. And I, if I get pulled over, I'm going to get arrested. And my mom went, hmm, uh, you should try Valley Heart. It runs along oh Ventura God. Boulevard. And it's a side street, but you can just go all the way down mm-hmm. on Valley Heart. And savvy, uh, the cop, cops are all on Ventura Boulevard. Oh. Th- that was a Sunday night. Monday morning at 845, I was traveling down Valley Heart, pulled over, arrested. It's almost like she called ahead. Fired from my job. Oh, my <laughs> God. You didn't hear it from me. <laughs> Jeez. Once I got arrested, I had to go sit in the tank over at uh, North Hollywood, whatever that whatever that precinct was. Uh, the cop let me ride in the front seat. Oh, how nice. Yeah. That is nice, actually. I think he cuffed me, but he said you can ride in the front seat. It's a real it's, Pyrrhic victory. <laughs> yeah, and... Uh, and I just pulled my motorcycle over. He didn't tow the motorcycle, which I have definitely had happen mm-hmm. more than once. But um, I parked it, and uh, then uh, I went to uh, I went to the precinct, and then I sat in the tank. And then um, I think you know you get the phone call. I called one of my friends. Wow. Well, none of my friends had six hundred bucks laying around. Barely had it between them. But they could pass the hat between like five of them and cobble together. Enough. It's interesting. I never called my dad. I never called my mom. I never called wow. a family member. I just called Todd or Chris or somebody. They passed the hat. They got together, you know, 600 bucks. And, you know, seven hours later, uh, they got me out. And then I just paid them all back their wow. 110 bucks. You know who they are? They're your pallbearers. Yeah. Those are your ride or die, ride or die. motherfuckers. Right. Yeah. It's, a, it's, an, it's an interesting uh, insight to parenting, which is... Who do you call? Like when I was in the, hmm. I was in the tank and uh, the 
cell or just in whatever the general pop cell they had there with the drunk drivers and everyone else. And, and I just remember thinking, how am I getting out of here? And I know, I never for a fleeting moment thought about my dad or my mom or anyone who like had a checkbook or who I knew. I was like, my friends are going to figure this one out. And uh, they figured it out and I got out and I just made my last payment to Todd three weeks ago. (laughs) You see your debts through. You're an audible man. Yeah. So uh, riding a motorcycle with a warrant is is bad times. I just feel like it's so easy to get uh, pulled over. All right, let's see. Let me hit uh, Hyundai. Ah, that's right. Hyundai, the new Tucson. Hyundai questioned everything to create the best Tucson ever. Every inch of the all-new Tucson has been completely reimagined, resulting in an SUV loaded with innovation inside and out, from design to technology to safety. Every aspect of the new Tucson has been improved and completely redesigned. It is a nice SUV. It is a lot more, it's bigger than most in its price range, and it's loaded with technology. They have a digital key, allows you to use your phone as a spare key. It's got a 10 and a quarter inch full touch infotainment screen as well that works very nicely, right front dead center. LED daytime running lights, stylishly hidden in the front grill. And uh, like I said, I spent a lot of time in this car. I know cars, and uh, Hyundai hit it out of the uh, ballpark with this one. You learn more at Hyundai.com. All right, we'll break a little early, and then we'll bring Max Pat in to do some trending topics right after this. Well, he stands no more than five foot three. This puffy head, horny, hungry Asian pygmy. Road trips with Corolla and sleeps in a drawer. Heard he's good with the ladies, Filipino man whore. Took a school bus trip all around the state. He got a big appetite, likes to clean his plate. His real name's Laksamana, but not to Adam. So we changed that shit up, now we call him Maxapata. Maxapata, 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 Maxapata. Oh, 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 Max Zapata. Rock me, Max Zapata. Max Zapata, Max Zapata. Max Zapata, Max Zapata, Max Zapata. <laughs> Thank you. My favorite part is Filipino man whore. Mm-hmm. I like the woman's voice. Yeah. <laughs> is that a woman's voice? I don't know. Rich Banks. Uh, Rich Banks is really talented. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Range. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's get into some some trending topics mm-hmm. here. Uh, over the weekend, well, actually, I'll start I'll start off with this. When you when you were growing up, guys, uh, were were flyers for parties a big deal? Like, did you, you guys get a lot of fly like for parties, the birthday parties? There was no other way to know the party was happening. Yes. Wait, is this different than an invitation? You, no, yeah, this it is different in the sense that they get passed around. Like, so randoms could just like get college, these. Like at college, like well, Get these flyers. Raves, I, you know, you're much younger than I am. Yeah. Raves were a big deal oh, in like, the late 90s. That. Like, a, yeah. oh, at the Shrine Auditorium here, flyers everywhere. There's a rave going on. It's interesting. I was doing a podcast yesterday, and they were talking about, it was like a football podcast. But um, they asked me how I got into Pop Warner football, and I said, I said, who got you into it? And I said, there was a telephone pole across the street from my house when I was seven. And it just had a stapled East Valley Trojan kind of cardboard, like, Mm -hmm. come sign up. Here's the dates or whatever. And I just got it off the telephone pole. I mean. Damn. I know. Not even the telephone, the fucking pole. (laughs) <laughs> just the pole part. Yeah. I didn't even need the wires. I just walked across the street. I think about how much shit just to be on telephone poles. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how you got the word out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, growing up, I, I played in a lot of like like punk rock bands and shows, and so that's how we would get the word out. We'd go to Kinko's and just get the brightest like sure. neon colored paper you could find and just cut them in a, mm-hmm. in a four pieces. But you asked about birthday parties. But, that's yeah. weird, right? Well, that's extremely weird. Uh. I I don't know. I thought that that's what people did back in the day, like or like just How like house you? parties. I don't yeah, for know. house parties, absolutely in college. Yeah, yeah. never once. Well, I kind of remember a lot of word of mouth. It was just people spread it around the school, sure. and then they'd go, "You go on Saturday yeah. to McDougal's house or whatever." And anyway, Poor sorry, a. go ahead. Um, yeah. well, well, those were DTR parties. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, there was a digital flyer for a party that went out last week. 
for uh, Adrian's Kickback. Mm. I don't know if you guys have heard, heard of this, but so Adrian, 17-year-old kid, uh, average high school sco- student from East Vail, California. He made a digital flyer for his TikTok that just says he's having a kickback. It's going to be in Huntington Beach at the fire pits. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah. Were the cops like shutting down Huntington (laughs) Beach? Yeah. A lot lot of people involved. Yeah. So what happens? He just puts the time, 730. What's BYOE? May 22nd. That's what what I was thinking. Bring your own everything. Bring your Mm -hmm. own ecstasy. I don't don't know. Kaylin, do you know? Uh, Kaylin doesn't know either. But uh, but he he basically just makes makes this digital flyer and he says, slide through the Saturday. We finna turn up. And he said, and uh, and it's just called Adrian's Kickback. And he said it was meant to be for his school, but by the uh, but during the week, this this invitation somehow unlocks TikTok's algorithm and gets viewed nearly 280 million times. Really? <laughs> yeah. So now celebrities on TikTok are posting like, "I'm going to be there. This is, this seems to be the hot spot to go." So during the entire week, this kid's just watching his flyer go viral on TikTok. And now he's starting to get a little worried. <laughs> and he's like, well, how about we do this? Let's change the location to this place in Los Angeles, who they, this, this place called uh, Cookies and Kicks. It's a, like a sneaker and streetwear store. We'll, we'll charge 40 tickets to the event, and let's change the location there. And that's what they did. So, because they heard people are flying in. People are posting, we're going to fly in from around the country to go to this event. Uh, some people said they're driving 18 hours with a group of people to be there. So... Uh, at, in Los Angeles, there was a line around the block. Teenagers in line said they, they was going to be the party of the year. But a lot of people still went to Huntington Beach, not knowing that the about the venue change. And the people that went to Huntington Beach, over a thousand people showed up for this party. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it was, it it was. Caitlin, put some videos of what it, what it looked like. Over a hundred. So I went to. Asia. I think over hundred fifty <laughs> people were arrested. This is this is Huntington Beach, like Main Street by the pier. Wow, it looks like rioting. <laughs> yeah, just mostly fireworks. Peaceful. Mostly peaceful. This kids' party just going viral. Cop cars. Yeah. Just, oh. Yeah. Oh. yeah people, it, it turned into a big riot. Somebody just people kicks fireworks. Yes. In yeah. In a in a grocery cart. I think he's asking, asking for it. Yeah, he's doing like that. Yeah. Look what he's wearing. He's asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So this is Huntington Beach over the weekend. This looks like Pamplona. Yeah, it's cars burning out, people fighting in the streets, throngs of humanity. Kind of, kind of makes you scared about the potential of this. Y- yeah, you know what I mean. I mean, Jesus Christ! Wow. Yeah, so it's just like Huntington <laughs> Beach. Just uh, they they did turn up, mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. And so now, and uh, what happened was the next day, though, a lot of the Huntington Beach locals came and cleaned the place up, and they were kind of embarrassed. I mean. I was. Well, I remember this was after the Jam and the Van show. I went and got some food, and they had the TV on at the restaurant, and a couple just walked by and they looked at it and they went, "Of course, Huntington Beach. Like oh. Huntington Beach is what the Florida of California yeah. now." Yeah, that's what, what they're saying. So, well, the Huntington Beach. Um, <clears throat> trying to think, didn't the um, oh, what's his name, the UFC fighter, Huntington Beach bad boy, Tito Ortiz? Tito Ortiz wasn't he elected? <laughs> Yeah, like to, to the counselor. Like, or the Camacho. I think he got booted. But, by the way, that had to be an interesting thing. You're sitting with the Long Beach uh, City Council, and like, we're going to boot Tito Ortiz. Okay, go tell him. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Everybody no, I, think we should, I think we should do it via tech. No, no, you go down the hall. You go tell him. This information should be delivered personally. <laughs> yeah, go tell him. I'm not going to tell him. Uh, I don't even know what he got, but, but the the point is, is uh, look, I like Tito, but uh, they have a UFC fighter on their their city council. Yeah, that's who Huntington Beach is. Yeah, mm-hmm. you would if uh, if you'd perform that weekend, Adam, that would have oh, been right man. there, right by, right by sea legs. We finna turn up. <laughs> yeah, he's such a cool guy. <laughs> Thank you. I really pulled that off. But uh, yeah, so a viral event that who knows what will happen after. I mean, that was just a ki- uh, like a seventeen year old kid in in high school. Like, I mean, I'm also curious. I feel the same way of when people stand in line for five hours or to buy sneakers or they camp out to see Star Wars for four days. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a kind of a weird. We're living in this weird time, which is you can't take a young person 
and watch a movie with them anymore without them checking their phone nine times. Correct. Like they sure. literally look at their phone with the screen in front of them. But they also seem to have an un- unbelievable amount of time just to go somewhere and stand Sit. around yeah. Yeah. or wait in line, Get in or, line or hang, in hang out. Like yeah. kind of which is it? Is it short attention span? Is the phone enabling everyone to right. stand in line because we can conduct yes. our business? Yes. I think that's what it is. And yeah. I have to tell you, I was it was such gut check time this weekend and I was so deeply ashamed and it, it was a very powerful moment that I will probably remember forget by next week but we were I, I've been real busy dealing with vendors and stuff for the wedding and on Etsy and doing my little thing and so my phone's always just kind of in my hand and I'm checking if you know this person check me back or if the cake topper's in whatever always and we had the little one this weekend and Andy was checking something on his phone and I'd been on my phone all morning and we get in the car and the little one's in the back in the booster seat Andy starts to drive and I'm still on my phone and he said all adults have to put their phones down for 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. And that like oh. got me like mm. right in the chest. Yeah. I was just like, oh Big my God, target. big target, <laughs> big feelings. Are you uh, you dealing with the vendors? Oh yeah, so many vendors. That price flexibility with some of those. I mean, do you try to you them down? <laughs> Here's the thing. Say the Here's word, the thing. but I didn't people can get, do the math. I didn't Finna get that turn gene. Up. <laughs> I, I didn't get that gene. If anything, I go up because I don't want to be made uncomfortable. Ah. I've I've t- I've dipped a toe into some flexibility, and I've been shut down so hard mm. that I I can't. Even, I'm, I'm too ashamed. I think the only break I've gotten is the videographer, but. It's because I'm only asking him to be there half the time. So can we please pay almost half the price? Like that's as far as once every like seven years, it's someone else's prompting and they Mm go, all right, you're dealing with the garage door company, right? All right. So they got the garage door for your your unit. But what if we do the neighbor's unit? Mm -hmm. They'll give you a break on two garage doors. After they give you a break, if you do two garage doors and then you go, "Uh, how much is the garage door? And I go, 3,500 bucks. And then you go, how much have I got the neighbor's unit to do two? You guys could install two. And they're like, seven grand? <laughs> I'm like, okay, I'll never try this again. I tried it. I didn't want to do it. That's I'm ex- sorry. I tried it once. That's I'll never exactly do it again. That's exactly right. And do you know how clogged my Facebook timeline is? Of, I have a free uh, meal kit from this person. I have a free because they will they think they're going to get something. But it's just everybody's trying so hard to get something for free that they're just they're doing so much extra work. I, I don't have the bandwidth for it. Agreed. Yeah, the the. The wedding industry, I mean, remember, I was oh. planning a wedding, too. Like, I remember I was talking to Nate uh, over at Chass, and he said, when we, when I was talking about venues, he said, I would rather tell them that I'm filming a Hollywood commercial there than having a wedding there. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're never supposed to tell them it's for a wedding, for makeup or hair or anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's when you like, get gouged. They know. Oh. That you'll, yeah. pay, you'll pay anything. Any price. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, let's uh, let's go into some some apologies that oh, have thanks. happened recently. Yeah. yeah, we'll get into some apologies. First off, let's go to the WNBA. Uh, Connecticut Sun general manager and coach Kurt Miller, he was fined $10,000 and will be suspended one game for a comment he made about Las Vegas Aces star Liz Cambage on Sunday. So Cambage posted a video saying that uh, Miller, the uh, Connecticut coach, tried to get a referee to call a foul in his favor by mentioning Liz, uh, by mentioning Liz's weight. So according to Liz, she said that Miller said to the rest. I, I saw this on ESPN last night. Yeah. So who ratted him out? Do you have a mic on? Did she overhear it, or did the ref rat her out? Well, this is all according out? to Liz, so I imagine Liz heard it and oh, okay. complained. So what? Did, what happened? So Liz, so Liz said that Miller remarked to the ref something along, along the lines of, "Come on, she's three hundred pounds." Yeah, it was basically. <laughs> I, I. She was like. It's just basically what they they do it. They used to do it with Shaq all the time. Like you sure. can't call a foul on so and so. He just backed him right. in. Like what do you want him? What do you want him to do? Happens in the NBA do? all the time, nonstop. By the way, Brian, if that plays at the end of my news segment, I will never come back. <laughs> really? <laughs> she was pissed. I, yeah. I I don't know. I feel, first off, coaches got to yell shit out like all the time right. in the sort of course of the whatever. And he was basically saying she's a big girl, right. which she is. She's yeah. Well, you, um, I have a video of her. Oh, yeah, we have her. Yeah, let's let's hear how big she is. She, she'll <laughs> say it. But something went down uh, in today's game, and I need to speak on it because if there's one thing about me is that I will never let a man disrespect me. Ever, 
ever, yeah, ever, she especially sounds like a, a little fucking wiper. delight. She's Australian. So to the coach of Wait, Connecticut. What'd she, yeah. say? What'd, she say? what'd she say? Especially a little white one? Yeah. Let's oh. hear it again. I didn't hear Ugh. it. Yeah. Yuck, I hate her. I didn't hear Respect me. Ever, ever, especially a little white one. Go to the coach of Connecticut. I'm sorry, little sir man. I do not know your name. Um, but the next time you try to call out a referee, um, you know, trying to get a call, being like, come on, she's 300 pounds. I'm gonna need you to get right, baby, because I'm 6'8. Mm-hmm. I'm weighing, I just double checked, because I, I love to be correct and get facts. I'm weighing 235 pounds and. I'm I'm very proud of being a big bitch, buddy. Big Ben's the bitch baby. Part, right. Um, <laughs> so don't ever try to disrespect me or another woman in the league. I don't know if that's how like coaches run. Like you just disrespect. You try to disrespect women like that from the uh, sideline. Shut the Are you fuck so lucky? Up. All right, first she's off, why is she bringing fucking race in? By the way, yeah. you can't disrespect a giant person who's angry like this person. You'll get your ass kicked. I, he was a coach. He's trying to make a point. I, I, he's not trying to disrespect he's you. Trying he's trying to, get, trying a to call. get a call. Yeah. All right, she should shut up. Why and is there emblem McDonald's? She probably played in the McDonald's like high school all star yeah. oh, okay. team or or something like that. Yeah. So uh, about her, she currently holds the WNBA single game scoring record. Really? Yeah, fifty three points. And then uh, here's here's uh, the coach's apology. Quote, I made an inappropriate and offensive comment in reference to Liz Cambage's height and weight. I regret what I said in the heat of the moment and want to sincerely apologize to Liz and the entire Aces organization. I understand the gravity of my words and I've learned from this. Well, or he's going to the cornfield. That's right. Yeah. All right. She should shut the fuck up. Yeah. That's my feeling. While, while we're talking about basketball, though, do you see the LeBron thing over the weekend? I heard a little bit, but I didn't I didn't see anything. I was... So, um, so, so Sonny he, won six of his eight parlay games. <laughs> oh, by he's the getting way. better. Yeah. You, know what yeah. that, you know what that's called? A loser. That's oh. what I said. <laughs> true, true. Lost first, the first loser. one. Yeah. Yeah, if he was the first one. Oh, yeah. So LeBron was uh, caught at like a, a tequila event. Mm-hmm. And you're not, and it's right before playoffs. You're not supposed to go to any events before, uh, while you're, especially while you're still playing because you'll get, you got to quarantine. Mm. And the NBA is under a lot of flack right now because they're not suspending him. They're not doing uh, it. Oh, like, oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, is it? the power of LeBron or because maybe everyone's COVID restrictions are getting lighter, but NBA has really has been known to like really be strict about it. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah, the they past, had the whole bubble and everything. Yeah. So it's a, yeah, it's kind of a weird story over the There's weekend. There's no scenario where they'll suspend LeBron, especially during the playoffs. No, of course. Not. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Uh, let's move on to fast nine, Adam. Mm. Oh, I just saw a trailer for this. Mm. Well, uh, China's seen a lot more than a trailer. It is out. Damn it. Really? It is out in Life South show. Korea. Wait, is that like to be downloaded like illegally? Or oh, no, no. Like, they released it. Oh, no shit. Yeah. So it, it, I would it, watch that shit at a wet market in Wuhan. <laughs> <laughs> That's how fucking jonesing I am. for. Cisco I got, raves. I got fast nine blue balls because they <laughs> dangled it out in front of me a year they ago did. and they pulled it, yeah. pulled it back. Live yeah. show in China. Let's yeah. do it. So yeah, it made a uh, 162.4 million box office earning it, uh, 135.6 million from China alone, and uh, yeah, so it debuted in South Korea, Russia, Hong Kong, uh, the Middle East. It's not coming out for a, mo- a month or so. Over yeah. a month. It's yes. coming out in Ju- June 25th here. So exactly mm-hmm. a month from yeah. right so now. So that's our big summer blockbuster, and that's why they got it first. Why did they get it first? I have no idea. But you know what? I wonder if it's because the restrictions are more um, lifted over mm. in, in those countries. Right. I don't think. If, I, I, well, who knows? If um, you're Sony or whoever's releasing, I think it's Sony. But I like, think they know what they're doing, yeah, Brian. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> you want to strike when the iron's hot, and the iron's going to be hottest when all the restrictions are lifted. I mean, you know, there's a. The bottom line, I think, if you really think about it, if you make movies or you make uh, blue jeans or whatever the fuck you it is you make, or you're you know, running big tech or whatever it is. Um, you know, we got 330 million people and they got 1.5 billion people. So we used to not care because they all had a completely different culture right. than us and good luck selling whatever what, whatever um, Danny K movie from the <laughs> 60s. The Secret Life of Walter in, Mitty. In China. It's just uh, who cares, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, 
they figured it out. Right. If they want to watch all that shit and they got a lot more people than we've got, then we'll cater. we shall yeah. we shall cater. Turns yeah. out jumping cars from building to building translates pretty well. <laughs> pretty well. Yeah, but uh, it's just weird. Like living in this digital age, too. Releasing a movie a month early on, on the other side of the world could get here in 20 seconds. If right. like if someone had an iPhone or something, so they don't have any technology. Yeah, of it. true, true. <laughs> well, um, I don't like the precedent of it. I don't like us busting our hump on a franchise like that and giving them. I, I could give them the weekend before mm. or the Wednesday well, early pre- preview, mm-hmm. but a full month and yeah. change. So yeah. the aforementioned Star Wars. That's funny you mentioned that because there was for for eons uh, these big movies would come out in the U.S. and then gradually come out overseas, and there was a big Star Wars nerd thing where it was like one what. One movie, one release. One day, like they wanted to all release on the same day, and of course, Lucasfilm said, "Fuck yourselves." Mm-hmm. But for the longest time, the U.S. got it first, and this is a little bit back. Yeah, we're like the second-rate dollar theater. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, we, the bargain. Sad. Was, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, John Cena was doing a lot of promo uh, for the release in China, and he had to apologize because he uh, he made a, a comment that saying that Taiwan is quote the first country that can watch Fast Nine. How dare he? Yeah. Yeah. Taiwan is not a country. It is considered by Beijing as a territory claimed Ooh. by the People's Republic of China. So <laughs> he had all the to, things to get in trouble for. Yeah, he got in trouble. And here, we'll, we'll post a video. Uh, Ken will put the video here. He had to apologize. And he apologized in Mandarin. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, let's watch this. And I'll translate over Oh, good. It. Oh, Chris. There's subtitles. Hello, China. This is John Cena. There's something I have to clarify. It's all done a lot of interviews for F9. In one of the interviews, I made a mistake. Does he speak Mandarin? Uh, sounds like he, he does. does. Very good. Everyone asked me if I could use Chinese to explain it. There you go. The F9 crew has given me a lot of information. There were a lot of interviews and information. And I made a mistake. I have to say this right now. And it's very important. (laughs) Very, 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 very sorry. I love and respect China and the Chinese people. Oh, boy. I'm very, very sorry about my mistake. This stuff feels Orwellian to me. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I sincerely apologize. You must must understand that. I really love and respect China and the China people. Is China people offensive? Mm. It should be. I'm sorry. Bye. That was impressive, though. Yeah. It's... Fucking impressive. Yeah. Now, he needs to apologize to me and Bill Simmons for the Marine. Mm. Because <laughs> we were the only two people in that theater, and that movie sucked. <laughs> what about the young girl who left 10 minutes in? <laughs> yeah, that hottie. Uh, all right, we're getting some scary territory uh, here, people. Yeah. We're all just fucking doing the bidding of China because wow. they have money, and we all have to apologize. Mm. This is uh, Mark the Time. Everybody... W- I was yelling about it a year and a half ago or whatever when LeBron James was mm-hmm. uh, yelling at the guy for, uh, I don't know, he stands with Hong Kong or something. No, he stood uh, with... Um, uh, Daryl Morey? Yeah. No, the... The Rockets. The Rockets. The Rockets. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah. I think it was Daryl Morey. Yeah. Probably was. Sorry. Yeah. That was the beginning. Now yeah. we're oh, in. It's still we're going. We're in. So- Apologize to your new masters, everybody. <laughs> Well, if you want some more Orwellian conspiracies here, Mark Ruffalo released an apology. Today. Really? Yeah. What? He's so um, he he commented. So it's unclear exactly what post he, he was uh, apologizing for, but he suggested earlier this month that Israel's actions were compared to apartheid in South Africa, and that sanctions could similarly work against Israel. And basically. Um, he, he kind of ref, like alluded to it being a, a genocide. So if America does to s- Israel what they did to South Africa, it would get Israel to change is what he's saying. Yeah. So he, t- he tweeted, uh, I have reflected and wanted to apologize for posts during the recent Israel-Hamas fighting that suggested Israel is committing genocide. It's not accurate. It's inflammatory, disrespectful, and it's being used to justify anti-Semitism here and abroad. Now is the time to avoid, avoid hyperbole. We finna turn up. <laughs> it's a weird time. Yeah, weird so, way and, everyone's, and everyone is now just thinking, this is Disney. Like, mm. I mean, there's, uh, this is all conspiracy, but it, yeah, everyone's saying that <laughs> Disney's having him do it. That's an interesting apology, though, because it generally goes the other way. You know, it, you, you generally don't get any points for standing up for Israel. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, I think it was. I, I think the apartheid thing is mm-hmm. is some people have been calling it apartheid and it's offending the the the. Well, first off, co opting either the Holocaust or apartheid mm-hmm. is, is a little third raily, mm-hmm. yeah. and then our our new world order. So, also, you can. It we're so Black Lives Matter centric that if you appropriate some atrocity, you know, if you say this is akin to modern day slavery right. or something like that, the, everyone gets super agitated sure. right. now. So I think that's that's probably it. But yeah. who the fuck cares what Mark Ruffalo says? I, I don't <laughs> get. I do because I I read a lot of the blah 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 games. I, oh, I care very much. That's that's true. <laughs> we need him to keep talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's let's uh, let's move away from the apologies now. And uh, let's do a little palate cleanser with a new band that came out over the weekend, the Linda Lindas. Mm-hmm. You, you, you s- We're covering band formations. Well, mm-hmm. you'll, you'll, they actually they went viral, so they are they are. Group are they of the girls. little girls yeah, in the library? That's oh, right. so oh yeah. the, are they better than the one eight hundred cars for kids? I band? secretly love that band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I secretly love that song, Brian. I'm serious. I'm talking about the band. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Yeah, that one? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, they got that. Dawson had to take his earphones. Those off. kids in the commercial, they ain't playing that. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, I got news about for a you. Tinfoil hat. Yeah, I got news for you. Those guitars are not plugged in. What about the violin? You know what this is? <laughs> this is exactly like when Dr. Drew told me that the pool for the love boat was on a sound stage. Yeah. And I said, fuck, Heresy. no fucking way. I've yeah. seen that show a thousand times. That's filmed on that boat. And then he showed me a wide picture of like a cyclorama in the distance. I was like, fuck. Oh. Fucking ruined it for me now. And you just ruined the Cars for Kids band. I did, I did. Well, another note on that to ruin it even more, in the casting session, they specifically cast, they needed five children with no soul. Yeah, I think you might be right about that. And they got them. Just say white kids. Yes. (laughs) You are getting some very treacherous waters here, to quote the love boat captain. (laughs) A little (laughs) chop. (laughs) I fucking love those commercials. You do not. Oh, I do. You guys are gonna replace, Come they were, on. They replaced the band, Adam, if you, know, I don't know if you noticed. KFIF oh, yeah, it's like Menudo. They, they age out. Sorry, we'll, we'll play. Oh, my God. So tell me they're not playing. A pox upon they're all of you. In. Look at the keyboard kid. Okay. Guys, go, what, uh, Dawson, what would he need an amp for if he wasn't yeah. playing? There's some crazy jazz chords. <laughs> this is the original band. Yeah. Donate online at carsforkids.com. That's cars with the K. Pickup is quick and easy. You'll get a vacation voucher and... Okay, so it's plugged in, but yeah, but still. This is even the most rockin' version. They rip. There's a new one. All right, so you, got today, yeah, yeah. you, you sing uh, the Linda Linda band is yeah. better than this? Oh, uh, they're pretty good. They're different. Yeah, they're let's, different. Let's so this this video, so they, they performed at the library uh, a couple weeks ago, but then the library posted just one of their songs, just separate on their YouTube, and this thing just went viral over the weekend. It did. Here, here we go. This is their the song. The little girls in a bikini yeah. kills t-shirt. Down, a, boy a boy in my class came, came up to me and said that his dad told him to stay away from Chinese people. people. After, After I told him that I was Chinese, he backed away from me. Eloise and I wrote the song based on that experience. So this is about him and all the other racist, sexist boys in this world. One, two, three, four! Uh, they're not playing their instrument. <laughs> the hell they're not. The, but the cars for kids. Yeah. yeah. Wait, they got a round eye playing rhythm? Uh, half half Latinx, half Asian. Mm, I gotta check her papers. Three quarters <laughs> Asian. Yeah. Max Zapata. I don't know if I like the Asians coming out of their shell. <laughs> you know what I mean? I kind of liked them where they were. Of course, you know they're in the library. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I love this. They're they're great, and they just got signed to Epitaph. What? Yeah. So the Epitaph, um, they uh, they they're owned by Bad Religion. They they like did all the punk bands growing up. Offspring, Pennywise. That's great. What are they? 13? Ages 10 to 16. They're two sisters, a cousin, and a close friend. Mm. And yeah, so that, wow. that 
that song's been viewed millions of times over the weekend. Let me guess, Orange County? Uh, I think just I, I think L.A. Actually, I'm not mm. sure where they're from. Mm, shocking. Long Beach. Yeah, yeah, could, yeah. could be. Steel Beach. Yeah, yeah, yeah there. But... Now we gotta, but the kid. So it was based on the kid saying, "My dad said, stay away from you." Yeah. Because of like coronavirus or something. Yeah. Mm. So now that kid has got to start a country band. <laughs> and rebut this song. Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Lion Asians. Oh, boom, do, 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 never <laughs> happened. Yeah, yeah. A Leonard Skinner and Neil Young situation. Yes, That's yes. Right. Southern, Southern man. man. Right? That's right. It's good. Start a country band. Uh, Nugent will produce, <laughs> and then you rebut. These yeah, lies right. being told about you. Smart. Yeah, I miss. Mm-hmm. I miss those. You get the diss tracks out early. That's right. Yeah. Get ahead of the shit. Yeah. Well. Anyway, big. I, I love them. I know it's kind of uh, the, the lyrics might be a little <laughs> alarming for girls that age. Yeah, right. they're, they're LA local. Can we book these girls on the show? Yeah, actually, I actually oh no, kind of know her dad, like one of the. What? Dads, yeah. Of course. <laughs> so. Oh my god! I can, uh, I can see. All right, let's do one more because uh, he was here. All right. Oh, here, let's do this one just because it, it's kind of fun. So there's a uh, a couple days ago, Radio Shack was trending. Mm. That's right. Which is kind of weird, but it was because of this picture that went up. Adam and I both commented on this. Yeah, it's 1987. Which one do you go to? And it's a picture of a Chat- Chatsworth Mall marquee for the Valley Plex 4 <laughs> movie theater. Yeah, Chatsworth probably no, 15 miles west, southwest, uh, west. Or east, uh, northwest, Fucking or something. I hear. Yeah, yeah, northwest. I think. Not a porn there. Northwest. Right? Yeah, porn I, used, I used to work out there. Nice. Yeah. Well, uh, the marquee says there are f- four movies playing at the time. One, The Lost Boys, then RoboCop, then Predator, and lastly, Full Metal Jacket. Which one do you go to? And I saw Brian's tweet. What was Brian's? Do we have tweet? my driver? <laughs> yes. Right here. I'll read it. Yeah. I believe it's 100%. The Lost Boys is a distant fourth place. Agreed. In fact, I'd rather watch RoboCop five times, Predator eight times, <laughs> and Full Metal Jacket three times before I watch The Lost Boys once. Lost Boys isn't a bad movie. It's just bleh, kind of mm. whatever and you know, schlocky bullshit. The other three movies are really good movies. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I, I saw them all. I, I liked them all. I think I said I'd... I'd watch the first hour of Full Metal Jacket and then sneak in and watch Predator. That's fair. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I did that. I did that uh, when uh, I was watching The Devil's Rejects. I couldn't take it. It was just t- it, it was Rob just- Zombie. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, I, I didn't like it. It's not my kind of movie. So my friends were watching. And I left to watch the movie The Island with uh, oh, no, Scarlett Johansson oh. out of the frying pan into the fire. <laughs> <laughs> well. It, it it sucked even more because after I get out of the island, my friends get out of the Devil's Rejects and they go, Chris, come on, we're sneaking in to watch the island. No. So I watched the island twice, <laughs> back to back. Yeah, the uh, the UA in North Hollywood is like the first multiplex that, that came to the San Fernando Valley, or at least that we could get to. And there's a lot of commingling. You'd go yeah. in and watch oh, one sure. movie and then yeah. get out and try to watch the other and stubs and you'd show up halfway into whatever the movie was that I don't uh it's it's kind of weird like I grew up with a strong emphasis on the scrounge a lot of scrounging every you know mm-hmm. work to McDonald's throw away these fillet of fish okay oh, I'll yeah. do it I'll stand by like the dumpster I'll try yeah. to hide them in the arm you know you know the sleeve of the dumpsters yeah. like I'll <laughs> shove them in there and I'll grab them later oh, wow. you know I'll, we'll have a pieing contest Inside at school. Man. I'll take the pie in my hands and run home. No tin. Holding yeah. a fucking apple pie in my hands is bleeding through my fingers. I'll run. <laughs> uh, at everyone's house, you know, try, everything was like... Foraging. Foraging. It was like scrounging. Like, oh, Chris's older brother, Mike, he's got a Honda scooter. And you just stand in the drive. Like, Mike, could I try the scooter? No. <laughs> Mike, come on. Let me just... No, Mike, you could watch me just go down the street and then turn around. No, come on, Mike. Come on, Mike. Like it was like it was just begging for oh. everything all the time. Could I have a bite of this? Mm-hmm. Are you going to finish that? Could I have when my buddy Alex Arado came on the show? He was like telling us all about the Webby's. Um, chocolate chip danish his mom would get we'd go into alex i was like where's the danish where's the danish you know i'm actually surprised i know it's not as common at least in the we don't think it's as common for men but i'm surprised you didn't get an eating disorder 
Once I you couldn't. Were, once there wasn't you had, enough no, food. Once you had access to food. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, because weak, in your you know? mind, <laughs> well, I it's, do, like I, cons- I, I, it's in constant I scarcity. Do ha- I do have my own version. We would break into the mall home kind of has club that at night. Yeah. yeah, I do. Yeah. I, it was uh, executed today. So I um, so I spent my whole life running around like trying to get stuff off mm-hmm. of people. I, I had a friend is dad would bring home Chinese food and if it sat in the fridge for more than four days then I could eat it because that meant he was done with it you know and I'd like reanimate it in the microwave sprinkling water on it (laughs) it was like yeah my dad's not gonna eat that tofu or tofurky or oh god sweet and sour pork anyone okay I can I can bring this rice back to life (laughs) it's alive it was all the scrounge scrounging bumming rides bumming food like everything I realize, and, and you go to the movie theater. You wouldn't just go to the movie theater to sneak in candy of and course. then try to figure out to, how to get into other movies oh, in the whatever. Yeah. And they're like, I just my uh, I drove uh, Natalia to school this morning, and um, she was like, "Can we stop by the Starbucks on the way in?" I'm like, oh, "Okay, stop by the Starbucks." I give her twenty bucks. She comes back. First off. My kids don't even remember change. It's like, uh, do you have the oh. change? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, you know, here it is. Like, here's your $14 back uh-huh. or whatever. It's like, change. And then uh, she gets her, her breakfast, whatever, breakfast uh, English muffin mm-hmm. with the whatever cheese and the baconator or whatever. And, like, I'm dropping her off at school, and she's like, I'm done. And I'm like, there's still, like, three bites. I'm mm-hmm. like, give me that shit, you know, yeah. and I'd throw it, throw it in my <laughs> mouth. But it's like, that's... That's where the, in, yeah. the insecurity yeah. comes in. But just realize, it, I, it, you, you can say it's about money, but I, it's more of an ethos. Yeah. Like, we were scroungers. Mm. We, we didn't have money, but we didn't need to scrounge right. like we scrounged. We scrounged everything right. totally. all the time. Yeah, growing up, for, for when we would go to movie theaters, the way we got food was either you would look in every trash for a, an XL popcorn bucket, because those ones get free refills. <laughs> oh. Right. So we would do a that. If, commodity. If, and if we didn't find any, what I would do is I would just get the relish packets, and I would just go ham on the, like, just sucking down relish packets, like 20 of them. Plastic and all? During the, yeah, yeah, right. I'd go to Henry's Tacos and get busted hard shell taco <laughs> shells and hot sauce <laughs> and, and water and just sit and eat it at Henry's Tacos. Like, that's just going to be confusing to my kids. Like, no <laughs> fucking idea. Punishment. Yeah. All right, let's bring it home, Max Zapata. All right. That was trending topic. <laughs> <laughs> Max Zapata. I think uh, scrounging has gone the way the dodo. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I imagine there's still scrounging going on somewhere in the world. Somewhere in the world, maybe not in the U.S. Yeah. We did a lot of dumpster diving, yeah. not not for food, but for like bike parts and stuff. Like go to the Schwinn and Schwinn shop oh, in really? Studio City or no, on Laurel most Canyon. Most of the time, and, you were looking for discarded porno mags. Well, yeah, so, not yeah. at the not at the Schwinn shop, but yeah. yeah. Just That's what we did. Stuff. Just cards and Porto Mag. <laughs> True. They were, they were out there. You reminded yeah. me one time I snuck uh, my friends and I, my high school friends and I snuck beers into a movie. What happened was uh, we had a friend on the inside. He paid for his ticket and he let the door open on the uh, the door, the external door, the emergency exit. And we all came in with our six packs of beer like an idiot. We uh, we brought glass bottles and of course we drank our beers. They roll. <laughs> We knocked one over, and it rolled for what felt like five minutes. Yep. Yes. It never stops. All the way to the bottom. It was brutal. It was yeah. like a Friday night packed theater. When I got busted for throwing water balloons at that guy in the Honda on top of the 7-Eleven, we had a dude whose older brother worked at that 7-Eleven, and he would just kind of look the other way while we shoplifted candy bars as and he should sacks of funyuns and yeah. shit Ugh, weird 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 time all right let me tell you about uh, all birds the tree runner made from sustainable natural materials that feel light on your feet and better for the planet breathable machine washable with a simple versatile design a perfect shoe for any outfit, Gina, you may want to comment that oh, I'm actually those are wearing mine lovely. Let me see. as we speak. Those are very nice and a nice deep cobalt blue. been walking around in these bad boys. They feel like uh, a 
uh, they feel like they're made of air. Made from uh, responsibly sourced eucalyptus tree fibers and uh, sugarcane-based sweet foam midsoles, and they're made with first carbon. They're the first carbon negative resin. So good for the environment, good for your tootsies as well. Even the packing is made from a 100% recycled card. I should say 90% recycled cardboard. The Tree Runner is carbon neutral this spring. Keep things light and breezy with the All Birds Tree Runner. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A L L B I R D S dot com. Legendary SNL writer Hugh Fink is going to join us right after this. Likewise, I hear you're an you know SNL very well. I'm a big fan. That's what I heard. Your era was one of the best. Oh, thanks. I'm excited to hear some, some stories. Sure. I know SNL fairly well. Do you, yeah, I imagine you do. Yeah, I. God, I mean, you you know, back in the day, you just watch it, and then Monday morning at school, just requote, just quote everything. Right, and you didn't have the liberty to watch it Monday morning on YouTube. No, it was a very and, different era, and you didn't have the ability to watch it more than once. So Correct. it's like whatever that, whatever the wild and crazy Hi. guys were up to, you had to kind of try to commit it to memory. Correct. All right, here we go. Do you want to be a part of Adam's next book? Sometimes I do. Submit your questions for Ask an Asshole by emailing them to asshole at adamcarolla.com. Ask about any topic you need the Ace Man's advice or answers on. That's A-S-K-H-O-L-E at adamcarolla.com. Legendary SNL writer and beyond, you think, is our guest on online writing workshop, how to write TV sketch comedy. It'll be Monday, June 7th at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. And uh, where do we uh, go to uh, HughFink.com to sign up. Good to see you, Hugh. Good to see you, Adam. Uh, so we're all big fans of uh, SNL here. I appreciate that. I had to tell you, I loved your talking about food culture right now and comparing to how you used to scrounge. Yes. And it reminded me of how I came across recently... My favorite food-oriented um, commercial, which I remember was for Lowenbrow. Mm-hmm. Oh, the beer. Remember, the beer. Yeah. So I don't know if you remember this ad. It's my favorite of all time where this guy walks into a New York City restaurant. His three buddies are waiting for him. He sits down at the table, and he goes, calls the waiter and goes, Jose, get me the biggest steak you got with a Lowenbrow. And the guy goes, Dolan, you're a genius. <laughs> no, I and don't just deconstruct that, that like. He's a fucking genius ordering a steak <laughs> and a beer. Like Galileo discovered yes. the planets. Right. He's unlocked the formula. I'm a trying, genius. I'm trying to think of what the theme was tonight. It's, it's kind of special. special. Beer you pour yeah. must mean something more It's somehow. like a Lou Rawls knockoff. Yeah, so oh, tonight, have. tonight, yes. let it be low and brow. That was the wow. ultimate. Wow. Yeah, t- uh, yeah, I'd say... Here's here's the good friends. Tonight is kind of kind special. Of, the beer you something. pour must be, mean something more somehow. Wow. Ask me my kid's middle name. What's your kid's no name? No fucking oh. <laughs> <laughs> To me, it was Not like important. post Mad Men, that yeah. era. Uh, do we have the, yeah. do we have the uh, Lone Bar- Brow commercial from 70 what? Seven. Here's Let me see. Good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Where you been? Well, it wasn't easy getting tickets for this game. Hey, Bob. Eddie, I know exactly what I want. I want the biggest steak you got in a bottle of Lowen Brown. Steak and Lowen Brown. Dolan, you're a genius. When you want the taste of a truly He's great a genius. Sir, the steak joint. Tonight, let it be Lowen Brown. Here's the chef. I was going to get uh, fondue and a peppermint <laughs> schnapps That's enema. That's a steakhouse. But, exactly. All you right. Find my position. <laughs> and he's got Nick tickets. That's right. And clearly a hooker afterwards that, right. that Dolan, who's a genius, has lined up. <laughs> that, by the way, that actor uh-huh. went on to greatness as Don't the say love boat. No. Oh. Sergeant from Chips. Oh, no shit. Really? That was Poncharella's uh, CO. Never seen an episode of Chips? Oh, god what? damn. Yeah. Are you serious? I didn't like you before you said that. <laughs> now this? Call. It, was, it was the Chips Dukes of Hazard bundle. Yeah, no, sorry. They were okay. Too busy watching SNL. Like oh, the again. Chips, the greatest <laughs> second SNL show on TV ever because 
the best part about Chips or any of those shows wasn't about them bringing down bad guys mm. and it wasn't about them scrapping with the commanding officer or right. the precinct. It was their weekend stuff. Oh, Once yeah. every seven episodes, you get to see how Ponch lived. Rolls. <laughs> And he's got his members only jacket and he's driving his T bird and the fucking ladies hey, are Punch all Rally. over him. Yeah. And he's hanging out at the beach, you know, and he's living that yeah. SoCal seventies lifestyle. And they're like, oh, this guy's got it. he's got a potted plant in yes. his apartment. Sadly, Adam, I got invited to do stand up early in my career at the Chips rap party. <gasps> oh, wow. I just knew that was someone got me to say there was no money. They go, yeah, but you know, there's a lot of powerful people in the crowd. Yeah, who work at Chips. And yeah, who just Larry got laid off. Larry, well, <laughs> exactly. So they, they introduced me. I'm a nobody. People are just talking over me. No one wants to stand up at a rap party. You're there to like get stoned and right. drunk. And so then they go, would you like to meet Eric? Oh. Estrada. So it's sure. like, well, do I have a choice? So they no. bring me over and and he's just like sweaty and drunk. And he didn't even remember that I performed. <laughs> the last thing I saw him do was uh, late night selling um, real estate in parts of Oregon and Washington. Yes, he sells like plots of land in a retirement yeah. community. Like, Great Pines. Right. Living out, outdoor living at its best. You know? You're right. I definitely regret not seeing it now. You should have seen it. <laughs> you didn't see him at the height of his power. Also, I think a lot of commercials rely too much on America loving fishing. And I don't think every time they go, you love fishing? Right. Well, you can fish right off your back porch. <laughs> eh, we could eat it. We get shit yeah. from the market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think America loves I the idea. Of fishing. I think they like the yeah. idea of fishing. You're right. Well, You're, that's yeah. right. Mm. Yeah, they like the idea, the idea of fishing more than they actually fish. Mm. That's right. And but then there's three guys who do enough fishing for the entire <laughs> country. Like every time you talk, I'm on a boat. What do you want? <laughs> I wanted the Popeil pocket fisherman when I was. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Didn't it just like illegally capture fish or something? Well, it was like a... It folded out. Yeah, folded. A Scott, what, not I don't microscopic. Think it was, I don't think it was telescoping. Oh, telescope. Okay, well, I thought it was. I It folded out, and it it worked under <laughs> Did the... Did it electrocute the, the water? It worked, it worked under the very dubious <laughs> assumption that you didn't plan to fish, but you might find yourself in a bass boat one Correct. day going, oh, shit, where's my rig? A fishing session breaks out? Yeah. Like if you're at a steakhouse in Manhattan with Dolan, and then, That's hey, let's right. go fishing. Right. right. You're a genius. Yeah, that was, was he Robert, was Robert Pine his name? That sounds right. Yeah, that was, that Robert was Pine. him. So he's now known in my heart for two things. <laughs> <laughs> God, I wonder what other themes, uh, you could fish out of me. Yes. Uh, theme songs, I should say. So, uh, SNL. Let's get to, uh, let's get to SNL. Um, the, uh, you got there in 95? 95. So, I got the, they had cleaned house with uh -huh. almost all the cast, but my friend David Spade was still there. He was the only star they retained. Mm -hmm. So, I was brought in to do a segment you might remember he did for one season called Spade Spain in America. Yeah, Spade, Spade in America. Right. America, where we would do, we went to the World Series, we would, Sean Penn gave him a tattoo at a Hell's Angel biker bar. It was really cool. But new cast, new writers, people were talking like the show was going to die. It was a precipitous it, time for the show. Lauren Whitt Littlefield was overseeing the show and giving notes, mm. which had never happened in Lauren Michaels' career. Right. To have to, you know, have an executive mm. weighing in. But things came together, fortunately, pretty quickly. The show got good. Then they left us alone. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. the drill, though. Yeah. Like yeah. Any, yeah. I always I always would tell everyone from all the years I worked in radio, I'd go, you know why you want great ratings? And they go, well, you get paid or you get prestige. I go, no, you get left alone. Mm -hmm. When, when mm -hmm. your ratings are bad in radio, there's a fucking meeting after every single show. And some guy with horrible ideas is trying to graft them onto your show. And <laughs> when you're doing great, you just, yeah. you'll never see the person. No. That's right. The rumor was that they had hired a focus group, if you can imagine, for Saturday Night Live. It had uh, been on 30 years. And the executive, some young woman, comes in and goes, Lauren, let me start with the good news. People like the show. Oh, imagine him. Go He's on. done the show a quarter of a century. Right. To be told by a focus group. Yeah, they like it. Oh, goody. Do you remember some of the earlier sketches you wrote or some of the I genesis of yes. the, some of those sketches? So the very first thing I wrote for Spade in America it was at the height of um, Ted Kaczynski had not been arrested yet. The Unabomber. Mm. This is early. So it was a huge deal. He's the number one terrorist in America. 
So I wrote Spade a message to the Unabomber, <sighs> where Spade, Spade looked straight to camera and did a thing of like, hey, Unabomber, don't know where you are, but a couple things. Number one, lose the aviator sunglasses. Mm. You're coming off gay. Like, it was just <laughs> all this stuff. And it was considered, at the time, sort of um, subversive, mm-hmm. just to be addressing a guy who's maybe out there. Mm-hmm. But that was really fun. And, yeah. and and no no blowback in those days. There was blowback. Well, my first sketch that I submitted that the censors wrote on the sketch, this will never air, was a commercial parody. You know how people collect baseball cards? Mm-hmm. So it was a bunch of kids going, got them, need them, need them, mm-hmm. got them. It turned out they were pictures of missing kids from milk cartons. <laughs> it was called abducto cards. <laughs> NBC did not like yeah. that at all. Wow. And what's great is Jack Handy goes, this is the funniest commercial <laughs> of the year. Do it. You got to do it. We had, uh, we had a man show bit about, uh, I think it was Young Frat House. Mm. I don't know if you can find that, Max Pata. The, it was like your first frat house. Yeah. Like it was a toy yeah. for like nine-year-olds and then the uh, scatological everything ensued sure. a- after sure. that. We also had Cooperstown condoms, which is reminded me of too, which is, you know, you're supposed to think about baseball, baseball when you're, you're having yes. sex yeah. and last longer. Yeah, that's well, good. Those are two things to look for. <laughs> I didn't write them. Hugh, that was a great cast when you started. Did you have any inkling r- r- right away? Did anyone jump out to you? It was like, oh, this person is a, a, a breakout star in the making. For sure. Obviously, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell went on to great success. Yeah, Fer- Will Ferrell did his, he had it at the Groundlings, then he did it our first show. Mm-hmm. It was the, the guy who yelled, get off the shed. <laughs> just this oh, right, bar- right. white the dad. dad. Yeah. yeah. And I remember going, this guy's brilliant because. He sort of had that Chevy Chase everyman quality, mm-hmm. but with a lot of anger. Right. And he expressed it really well. It's and... one of those sketches, I'm sure you know this very well, but like that would not have worked with a lot of other performers. That works mm. in the performance. On the page, it's right. you know, kind of silly and b- b- bizarre, but with that performance from Will Ferrell specifically, it works. It Correct. doesn't work with, I don't know, Jim Brewer, who's very funny, but you know what I mean? It doesn't work. That's that right. Way. And that makes so much sense that that was a, you said that was a Groundlings character? Mm-hmm. Oh, that makes that, that makes perfect sense now. That that's just one of those things he found in, 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 you know, in class or on stage and he took it with him. Yeah. Uh, you loved writing for Norm McDonald, who loved we love. writing for Norm. So my favorite thing to do with Norm was I created those Larry Kings that you might mm-hmm. remember, Adam, where yeah. people had done Larry King, but I portrayed him as it was based on his USA Today column mm-hmm. called News and Views. Mm-hmm. It was just an embarrassment. It was like Larry was just a publicity whore. If you paid him, he'd go like, if you see one movie the rest of your life, it should be Dante's Peak. All right. <laughs> Clearly a publicist paid True. him. But then I had him say stuff that was just downright shocking like is it just me or is anyone else sick and tired of nelson yeah. mandela <laughs> just the off the cuff <laughs> but man. norm of course loved it because yeah. it was irreverent and weird norm is one of the funniest dudes ever as you know as i know who just he's just crazy and as you know too he's a brilliant impressionist that guy sounds hot yeah he's <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, first things first, him doing like young Burt Reynolds always made me oh. laugh. He was doing Burt Reynolds from like 25 years right. earlier. And he wasn't even doing that much, just chewing gum, chewing gum. in the right way. Mm-hmm. It was just, and th- who- there's a genius in that. I got, I got a big hat. It's a funny hat. Yeah. yeah. Remember his Bob Dole? Yeah. He would just talk about it in third person and go, Bob Dole, <laughs> and clench his, his one pencil. arm. And, yeah. Yeah. I think I was listening. I think it was Michael Che uh, talking to Howard Stern and both of them agreeing that as far as Weekend Update goes, Norm MacDonald was their favorite. He was my favorite. Yeah. I was, yeah. Yeah. He would... Uh, Because he did that stuff all the time where he'd go like, I love when he did uh, Note to Self where he'd talk (laughs) the phone. I love that. You guessed it. Frank Stallone. (laughs) I loved when he'd do something like, worst job in America, crack whore. Um, This year, the second worst, yeah, the worst job, (laughs) assistant crack crack whore. That's right. Those those kinds of jokes always uh, made me laugh. Our first update that I worked on, he did that great joke about... uh, the number one song on the alternative music charts, better than Ezra. The number two song, Ezra. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Super, uh, yeah, nuts, but super, super fun. And probably Correct. easier to wrangle back then, I back guess. Back then he was. That's right. He cannot. Well, first things first. When people live to uh, live in Los Angeles and announce, 
I don't drive. That's strike one. Yeah. That's a it's really order. difficult to get on with right, things right. because you live in Los Angeles and you've announced you do not drive. Yes. Which makes it very difficult to <laughs> to do projects with you. <laughs> Who uh, did you ever sit on in the audition process? I find the audition process too. I did not. That was a kind of an exclusive group, but okay. I did get to sit and watch that on my on closed circuit TV because they would do it in 8H studio. And the writers, we had a feed to it. Sure, sure. So like when they, when Norm left Weekend Update and they had auditions for the new people, I got to watch them all audition. That was cool. Wow. Yeah. So did you, you, go oh, ahead. Follow, just to follow up on that, do does anyone stick out to you? Because obviously a cavalcade of people would come through to audition for the show. Anyone auditioned who was great that just didn't make the show but went on to their own success? Well, I, I won't even comment on what great or not, but you know who came really close to getting Update was Jeff Ross. Oh, they really? flew into audition, wow. and I remember he did well at his weekend update audition. In the sense that he's such a schmoozer, he got like all the camera crew laughing right. and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. But he didn't get it. Mm-hmm. But he did wow. well. Wow! Hmm. Did yeah. you have any designs on on acting in the show? I did. You know, I came from stand up, mm-hmm. so I did, and I was fortunate enough. I did my own weekend update piece with Tina Fe- Faye and Jimmy Fallon because there was one year, Adam, where this is striking. I was the only Jewish writer on this cast. That's it was unbelievable. Not true. Adam McKay was still the. I love it. Is it Schindler's List? No. <laughs> uh, and so I did it. Well, Lauren let me do a weekend update piece about. I started off by going like people asking why the show's not funny. It's because there's only one Jewish guy on the writing <laughs> staff. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I got to do that, and I did. Um, they put me in like monologues. Yeah. So I got. Oh, those are fun. I yeah. got beat up by. Um, um, uh, Who's the actress? Uh, I'm forgetting her name. Something about Mary. Uh, Cameron, Cameron Diaz. Diaz. She did a monologue where she had to like got pissed at me sitting in the crowd and she <laughs> slapped me. So we had to practice the her hitting me. So it was fun. How would you figure out the monologues? Because my technique was coming from stand up was come up with one or two things about their persona that the public was aware of, and then exploit it. So for example, Garth Brooks got mad because I wrote him a monologue that everyone wanted and then his publicist vetoed it. He talked about himself in the third person a lot. Really? In interviews. And I thought, okay, well, that's something easy to make fun of. Like, Garth does this and Garth does it. So I wrote a whole monologue where he did that and it killed. And then two days before Saturday, he's oh. like, I'm not comfortable with this monologue. Oh, my. Chris Gaines isn't comfortable with this exactly. monologue. Exactly. <laughs> wasn't Chris Gaines the musical guest? That Yeah, Garth was a good host. He was a good yeah, host. But uh, Chris Gaines was the musical so guest. So you scrambled for a brand new monologue? Honestly, he did. He barely did one. Oh. He like it was kind of BS. Wow. But the best part, Adam, was getting hosts who were contra, like Robert Downey Jr. We had when he got out of jail. Mm-hmm. So I sat. I said, "Look, Robert, are you okay with me writing a monologue where you make fun of the fact?" And he's like, "A hundred percent." So if they're on board, it's, it's the great. Best. Kevin Spacey at the time, he was a great host, by the way. His reputation was always doing playing creepy, weird guys. Mm-hmm. So the monologue, I said, can I write you one that exploits that? He said, sure. So what I had him do was he sang a Frank Sinatra song sincerely because he's got a good voice. Then we just chironed really mean, dark stuff about him. <laughs> but he, so he acted like that he didn't know that the words were there. He was another great host. The, 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 the uh, outtakes from Star Wars auditions. Yeah. God, he was oh, so yeah. good. He did Walter Matthau. Yes, auditions. I forgot about that. He's a great sketch. impressionist. I forgot a that he played... Bobby Darren, he in did in a movie. That's right, and probably did all the yeah. singing, all he the did. correct stuff. Very sad underwater mm-hmm. movie. Yeah, we, you know, the the question that everybody always asks, and and you're kind of answering it, but you know, people always ask the cast members like, who was just the nightmare of all nightmares? And for a writer, like you said, like Garth Brooks at the end said, I'm not doing this monologue. Well, there's some people that was just like, give me something to work with so I can write something for you. Correct. Like, who, you mean hosts who, yeah, who are good someone, about it? Or was there was there anyone that stuck out that was just like, I give up. I can't help this person. I can't write for them. Yeah, They're giving bad? me nothing. Who's a bitch? Yeah. Oh, who's yeah. Horrible. I was trying to say it in a nice way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so, like, I remember um, Bill Pullman. Mm-hmm. He had just done Independence Day. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So I wrote a monologue that went to the table read. And it, again, it was on board to be done. And the premise was that everyone confuses him with Bill Paxton. Of Michael, right? Sure. Like, that's it. And... He come, he calls me in the dressing room Thursday, so it's already been approved. He's like, hey, man, let's talk about this monologue. And I already know what's coming. He's like, why are we doing this? And I said, 
because it's funny. It's 100% true. And it'll get laughs. And he goes, but it's like people don't confuse me. So clearly, again, he's talking to his own people. Right. And they're just tell, they're kissing his ass and saying, you should, you're better than that. Yeah. But that's weird because that's how you score on SNL. Right. Be yes. self deprecating, make fun of yourself, right? Well, that's what and, absolutely. Love. And that's why, like, on Kimmel, celebrities meet, read mean tweets was a juggernaut for that reason. Yeah. And the more you're known as a serious actor or uh, certainly mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. an athlete or something like that, the more you can be self deprecating, the better America yes. likes it every time. Right. That's right. I could always tell the ones that had the weak chops because they'd get four syllables in and then someone would stand right. up in the audience and goes, I have Raise a question. The <laughs> and then everyone would come out on stage and start a, a dance singing. number. Yeah. And start singing. Because <laughs> like, they got nothing. The worst, too, is when a host who's not funny mm-hmm. thinks they are. So Lucy Liu is like, oh, no. write this down. Right? And I'm going, I'm writing down this. <laughs> I'm not writing this. That's literally what I was writing. But she pitched all these ideas. Of course, they never saw the light of day. Lucy Liu was giving you notes? Yeah. Well, she was giving me concepts for sketches. That's the worst. Oh, for sketches. She's like, this is a great idea. I got this sketch. Write this down. Oh, my God. How much change takes place right up until it's time to go? So between dress rehearsal which is, you know, just two hours before the live show, I'd say like 10 to 20 percent at the most. So mm-hmm. not a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not you're going to change the premise. You're not going to change the ending, really. You're going to change jokes. Mm-hmm. You might cut and you cut stuff, stuff that Lauren thinks no longer works. You just cut it. Yeah, there's legend of like stuff being in, uh, obviously you know this, in dress rehearsal, full on r- dress rehearsal, costumes, makeup, right. and then it gets cut. Doesn't make All the, the time. final show. But want- on the other side of that, do... Do skits or sketches from the dress rehearsal ever get slotted in to the main show? Like by the time it gets to the West Coast, if it was a better, no, better version, no, no, it's like the, you see the same stuff. Got it. Because they don't have the props and everything aren't ready to go. Got it. So, what are some of your favorite sketches that I worked on? Oh, would you, say? you, you, oh. and beyond, and beyond. Sure. So, okay, forgetting myself, I think Chris Farley's motivational speaker. <laughs> Oh yeah, is, is that Bill Shakespeare inspired? Over there? Yeah. Brilliant, right? Mm-hmm. The best. Um, I would say, um, I think Spade. I'm a big fan of Spade, Me obviously, too. but I thought his airline steward going bye bye yeah, yeah. captured such. I think it's still relevant. Yeah, so, right. Well, and I mean, it became such a catchphrase. I mean, we all were saying it. Well, it's interesting in that. You would never, you couldn't explain it to a different culture, like why this was funny. Exactly. You couldn't read it on right. a piece of paper. They go, I don't, I don't get it. like more cowbell. Right. You know That's what I mean? right. Like, oh, how is this funny? How is it? One of my, I think one of the most underrated ones, Adam, is a sketch Robert Smigel wrote where Dana Carvey played Tom Brokaw. Mm. Yes. And the bit was, if he, he, pre, he pre-tapes obituaries yes. of mm-hmm. famous people. Oh, so good. So Gerald Ford, who was still alive, the premise mm-hmm. was, okay, t- Tom, take one. It's like, Gerald Ford died today at age 84 of a heart attack. Okay, next one. Gerald Ford was raped by a bear. <laughs> was torn apart by wolves. <laughs> Tom Brokaw's going like, what? what? He's, that's not going to happen. What are the chances of that? <laughs> we got to cover our bases, Tom. And then you can like, find it, Chris. But that is, see that. I think that's such a like, great premise, right? right. They're pre-taping obituaries. <laughs> he would tag with like, and I'm gay. Yes. He's like, well, but I'm not even gay. He's like, well, you, you can come out. That's a true story. That's so funny. All right, we'll see if we can find that one. Yeah. In the meantime, we're looking for that. So I don't know if you guys have this. Every once in a while, like your worlds kind of collide or you have that moment. So for me, I was a huge SNL fan. I was a huge Quentin Tarantino fan. And he hosted in your era, right? In November. He sure was. Yes, yes. So talk about that because... That was not a great it was episode. Ho- it was hor- let's be honest. It was a horrible show. <laughs> okay, that was not and a good episode. It's one of, I would argue it's maybe as bad a monologue in the history of the show. I know. Do you know so what he did? He Adam? sang an Elvis he song. He came. No, he didn't sing an Elvis song. He sang a song from Bewitched. Oh, was that, that what it was? Tabitha sang when she had a rock band on what? one of the episodes. Why? Because he's insane and he's obsessed with pop culture. <laughs> and I was a song. Everyone knows I write monologues, so they go deal with Quentin. So Quentin's like, hey, man, <laughs> dig. So I got this monologue idea. Well, should... I'm gonna, you know, bewitched. I go, yeah. He's like, so dig, there's this song that Tabitha sings, all right? Mm-hmm. And I'm going to sing it live. I'm like, okay, Quentin, <laughs> most people who watch SNL, like they're under 40, uh-huh. they're not even going to know bewitched. <laughs> no. He didn't care. 
and he sang it live with the SNL house band it to crickets. Fall, it kind of fell flat. It I'm so nothing. glad you said that because I'm watching it like, oh, this is awesome. Quentin Tarantino's got SNL. It's like, no, this is not People were waiting. Well. They were waiting for a joke. There was no joke. Yeah. Well, now we got to find that. Hugh was pitching him the Michelob theme song. I was, oh, over and over. Yeah. Something finger popping. You know, there's something a little more modern. The kids, the kids are, they're in the tip of the kids' tongues. Oh, we, have, we have Brokaw's uh, pre tapes ready, by Oh, way. that's great. So, so. All right, uh, who are we up to? Uh, we're uh, still on presidents. Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford? Well, he's in good shape. <laughs> Just covering our bases, Tom. You never know. Okay. All right, all right. Gerald Ford dead today at the age of 83. <laughs> okay, good. And one for next year. All right, all right. Gerald Ford dead today at age 84. <laughs> uh, a little sadder. All right, all right. <laughs> Gerald Ford dead today at age 84. That was good. Good. Okay, what now? What now? Uh, now let's do one for if he's shot. <laughs> well, what are the chances of that? We're, we're just covering contingencies. I mean, it just seems like Gerald Ford... Look, not look, gonna... look, look. You're the one who wants to spend the whole winter in Barbados, okay? <laughs> all right. You know, we got to get ready. we got to be ready with something just in case. All right, all right Tom? All right, all right, all right. Gerald Ford shot dead today at age 83. Uh, add the word senseless. All right. Gerald Ford shot dead today at the senseless age of 83. <laughs> um, uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Gerald Ford senselessly shot dead at the age of 83. Good, good. Uh, okay, now suicide. What? <laughs> Just read it. All right. Gerald Ford dead today after jumping out of an office building senselessly. It's a nice touch. Uh, okay, moving on. All right. Gerald Ford dead today from an overdose of crack cocaine. Good, good. Next. All right. St stunning news from Michigan as former President Gerald Ford was chopped into little bits by the propeller of a communal plane. Good, one take. All right, we got it? Uh, no, we got eaten by wolves. What? No, come on. Is that Michael doing it. the voice? Sure it is. Ford isn't going to be like eaten it. by sure wolves. <laughs> Taft was. Really? Taft? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Tragedy today as former <laughs> President Gerald Ford was eaten by wolves. <laughs> he was delicious. <laughs> now, now that's just superfluous. I mean, yeah, you know. It, it, it's a former president, Tom. What are you saying? He's, he's not delicious? All right, all right. All right, fine. What's next? The, the double story. Here all right, all right. A fireball destroyed France today, and Gerald Ford is dead. <laughs> now, what are the odds of that? Now, come on. Fine, fine. We'll get Stone Phillips to do it. You know, I'm sure Stone Phillips would be thrilled to break a story like that. All right, all right. Let's keep moving. Okay. Stunning news from Yorba Linda today. As Richard Nixon's corpse climbed out of its grave and strangled Gerald Ford today. <laughs> Gerald Ford was mauled senselessly by a circus lion in a convenience store. <laughs> Good. Yes. All right, we got it. We're got just going to keep going, but that is fun. There's 16 versions oh, that he does. God. It's perfect kind of perfect. It's so it is. It's a great impression. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great, you know, it's, it's weird when you talk to people about stuff, but the, it's when, when repetition doesn't work it's, it's brutal but when it does work it just gets better and better and better and you're already queued up you're you're laughing now the image comes yes, up with the line the and you're, you're laughing <laughs> totally right? agree i by the way I, it's stuff like that that i use in my workshops nice because i i basically pick my favorite sketches some that i wrote and some that i didn't as examples and like we discuss why the sketch works like adam said Smart. Like the repetition let's get on. back to tarantino oh <laughs> we got the video 
Oh, oh here we go. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. I'm happy. You won't want to watch all of this. <laughs> I would like to do that song for you tonight. <laughs> Going for it. Gesticulating wildly. He is having a great time. The only one. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I miss you and I want you so much. Wherever you are. Singing is a lot like sex, which is trying harder doesn't always have a better right? product. Doesn't and create a better product. Since this is a it's comedy show, the right. crowd's waiting for something amusing. Right. He's singing a it's full song. Full song. Yes, yeah, somebody come down from the scaffolding. Now, did he think it went well? He thought it went great. Oh, yeah. The man was, seemed to have no sense of self. No. I don't really remember this one. How were his sketches? Terrible. Yeah. There was one where he hosted like a director's round table yeah. with Oliver Stone and yeah. Spike. I remember very well. Yeah. Spike Lee and Gus Van Zandt. And then he was like a hobo who killed, killed. No, he was a train conductor who killed hobos. Yeah. There was a, it was a very bizarre show. But is that, is that why we love his movies? Because there's like. Well, I would say, Adam, one thing is that he's generally not the star of them, oh, so that yeah. helps a lot. No, no, he's, he was, I, I got a story about that. He has feelings that, about but, that. No, what I'm saying is, is like, would we be secure enough to have the dairy farmer, Nazi, mm. Jew hunter scene go on for 23 minutes if we were making that movie? Would, would right. we be like, I no. feel like I'd be like, we've mm. overstayed our welcome. Right. We get it. He likes milk. Oh, I yeah. see Come on. That's so like, and, and it's like the no. fact that he just goes, we're going to sit in yeah. this fucking farmhouse no. for 19 minutes. Yeah. You're 100% right. It's the audacity meets yes. the talent. It's right. That, it's, yes. that, it's, it's that perfect. Because uh, he casts overlap. things beautifully. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. great, but I. I but that's his I've lane. made movies. Like I would be like, "Come on, let's go. Yeah, right, right. We, we need to get into it. We're not even. Right. This isn't. We could. We could, this whole seventeen minutes could be four and a half right. minutes, and we could get all the information in. You know. Right. Like, but that's where that's his lane, not right. that. Well, right, but it's it's his lack of self awareness right. that yeah. enables him right. to sing Tabitha's theme <laughs> on SNL. Do you even and know that song? You know pop culture. No, and I watched the shit out of Bewitched. I mean, that was <laughs> wow. yeah. I've, I, I thought know. that's kind of how life worked. Yeah. Right, like that's how you know every episode was McMahon and Tate, and they had a big client coming in town. And they're coming over for dinner. And if you screw this up, Stevens, it, we're, we're going to lose the account. There That's was right. always that. And then the, and the wife called the shots yeah. for the for the stodgy guy right. who would come over. And it was always there was somehow counting on Samantha to make a good pork shoulder yeah, to whip up in order dinner. to land the account right. with yeah. the guy who was you know traveling from parts unknown right. just to eat dinner. At one of the executives' houses. I, that was every episode. Right. That's right. My first time in L.A., I got to go to a Super Bowl party with David White, Larry Tate. Oh, oh. You know, who was classic. <laughs> he, I think he'd been blacklisted. <gasps> and I made the mistake of saying, oh, my God, so did you keep in touch with uh, Elizabeth Montgomery? Horrible person. <gasps> kind of a bitch. Whoa. Oh, yeah. It's like, this was my interest to show business. Oh, so you're not all friends, and it's not all kissing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was sad. Oh, I love her. I like she her better than Barbara Eden. Mm-hmm. And then they would always do, he'd do a lot of make mine a double. Mm. There's always booze a lot, jokes. A lot of booze jokes. Don't booze forget jokes. the souffle humor. Oh, Hugh, and I can tell you much more as I've become an adult now, I've realized like much more real, unrealistic, I guess, than or fantastical than marrying a witch and having a mother-in-law as a sorceress in Dr. Bombay. 
<laughs> is the fact that Darren would come home every day at five, walk right over to the bar and open the ice bucket. It was brimming with ice. I thought <laughs> this is the most unrealistic Fantasy. part of this entire production That's a right here. Point. That's he, Okay, how does this work? So she is in charge of filling the ice bucket at 4.40 yeah. every single Sharp. day. And if he didn't find fresh ice, there was always ice in the bucket. No one I'm going to make a drink, Sam. And he's like, there it was. He could make a drink at 7.45 in the morning, and she could still be in her nightgown, and the fucking ice bucket would be filled. What a great touch. That's a great commentary. <laughs> Thank That's you. I always wanted them to do a mashup of Mad Men and Bewitched. Mm-hmm. So basically, like, you'd see sure. Larry Tate pitch something mm-hmm. then cut to Don Draper That's reacting. Great. Larry Tate. And he was always, they, they were such fair-weathered friends. Oh, so he was a Larry, backstabber. They, they'd go, uh, they'd go uh, well, what do you think, Mr. Johnson? And he'd go, I don't like it. And then Larry would turn on Darren and go, you see, I told you, I love it. It's a great idea. He's my number one employee. Like they, they had to have, like all bosses were totally two-faced. Yes. And that's how they, that's how they did it. Now, were you disturbed when Dick Sargent replaced Dick York? I was more disturbed when they swapped out the drummers in the Partridge family. <laughs> that I remember that. Because they had that one kid who looked like a Hasidic Jew, <laughs> and they know, replaced him with, with a, a Hitler blonde. youth. That's they, right. And I was like, wow. That's that's a good point. I don't like the direction this nation is headed. <laughs> but oh, it, was, it told don't us a per, lot. As a, the first kid was in your tribe, Gina. You sure? He was okay. super- Semitic looking. Super Semitic. Yeah, yes. he was. And then they swapped him out with basically Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, it looked like basically like a Sean Cassidy knockoff, the little kid. Yeah, yeah, and mm-hmm. uh, no explanation, just nope. gone. Gone. And I, that's just the way TV used to work. Like, we're not going to get into it. We'll just swap out well, Dick Sargent for Dick York. The most famous example of that type of thing is Richie Cunningham's brother. He went upstairs, never came down. It was never spoken of. Yeah, but they didn't try to pitch someone else's him right. of, as his other brother right. yeah, or just, that brother. Just they just he, yeah. just he just left. Yeah, the yeah. reality police didn't watch TV no. in the way that they do now. Where... Very easily suspension of disbelief back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The good old days. I loved all that shit. Yeah. I'm sad. It's all I had. I didn't have, I didn't read. Parents and I didn't talk. I just had TV. I have to point then to you. What I found maybe the it's I like discovering young comedians. I don't know if you're this way, but there's nothing to me more pleasurable than watching a horrific professional comic on TV. So the worst set I've ever seen that I now watch obsessively, a '70s show that Dick Clark hosted called Cast of a Thousand. Mm-hmm. He had on Jack Carter. Mm. So this is the mid '70s. Yeah. So Jack Carter comes out and does a bit about rock and roll. Mm. Adam, it's so offensive because. <laughs> His take on rock and roll, he starts off and he says, uh, you know what I hate about rock and roll? Every song has the words baby, baby, baby in them. It's like a okay, false premise. Right. right. Like how many songs? Two? Yeah. Three? Right. Maybe. Then he proceeds to have a song play where he imitates a rock and roller, and the song is a blues song. So he gets the genre wrong. Was he established at the time? He was established, but I've done my research on him. He was considered like the grade C of that era. Like mm. you had Mel Brooks and those guys, mm-hmm. they'd throw Jack a bone because oh. there were so many shows, you know, g- tattletales and these game shows yeah. that needed a working comedian. Mm-hmm. So when you couldn't afford or get the good people, you called Jack Carter. It's funny because that bit sounds like an Andy Kaufman bit. You like know, he's that would trying have been funny. to be right. It's 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 offensive because it's false, right? And it also shows he's so out of touch. He ends the song by going "Disco Baby." <laughs> So you're saying rock and roll's bad and, and that rock and rollers use the word disco baby in their lyrics. I don't think you know what music is. No, you don't. I always, uh, well, can we find that, Max Apparel? Uh, I'm looking. <laughs> I, I, I always feel that way when comics float something and you go, what? And I always wonder how they think it's like universal. So it was uh, <laughs> David Brenner... <laughs> had a book called You Never See Anyone Eating Tuna Fish or something, as if, as if it was a brilliant observation, like my bewitched ice bucket yes. observation from moments <laughs> Which ago. Which is brilliant. But I'm like, I've seen hundreds of millions of people eat tuna. I, I don't know why, why is that an observation? I don't, 
I don't, I'm still confused. <laughs> right. To this day. You, you just reminded me, to your point of one of my Larry King-isms, was, yeah. does anybody remember baseball cards? <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, so everybody. Was, they still exist. We well, we're, we'll allow me to geek out for one more moment. One of my favorite sketches of your time there. I don't know if you had anything to do with that, so I'm going on a limb right here. But when David Allen Greer hosted and uh, the uh, morning show devolved into the uh, the apocalypse, basically. Them cannibalizing each Amazing. other. Amazing. Did you have anything I to do with not, this? I think Will oh, had on. a hand. I, Adam <laughs> McKay as well. Oh, I think such a great that. sketch. It's one of those happy, you know, hey, we're a phoenix in the good morning phoenix or whatever it is. Oh, and the teleprompter goes out, and all of a sudden it's Lord of the Flies because oh, they can't right. exist yep. without a teleprompter. All right. Good bit. start killing each we other. We got Jack Carter ready oh. from Dick Clark's, did you say show of shows? No, it's no. a oh. cast of a thousand. Cast of a thousand, That's it. sorry. Gonna put on a clinic here. And you never understand what they're singing. Without the word baby, 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 they'd have no songs. And they never finish a darn song. Never, never finish one. Blues. Blue Moon. I saw you standing up. That's I got you under my Tangerine, you're my ding dong dong ding dong 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 Oh, no. That could be Led Zeppelin, The Stones. You know, a really big wow. tell about that. First of all, the sweetener was obvious. They never cut to the audience because it would have just been people uh, deadpan. Confused. Yep. Wow. False premise. Oh my God. False premise. Now we have to find David Brenner's book cover. It's, it's um. <laughs> it's nobody ever sees you eating tuna fish. Nobody ever sees you Which, eating. Tuna well, you said fish. the most common thing in the world. Every I day I see someone eating tuna fish. Every day at lunch from right. K, from probably the first grade to 12th, yeah. I witnessed. Every day. People <laughs> witnessed me eating, devouring <laughs> tuna fish. Yeah. But Scott's cheap flights travel the world and never pay full price again. People pay too much for flights. Prices go up and down by the hundreds of dollars, even in the same day. So you could pay the difference, or I should say a different price for the uh, same flights. A person sitting next to you on the same plane, they combine technology with a team of flight experts to monitor thousands of routes on major airlines all day, every day. Oh, man, this is a godsend. When prices drop, they send members an email, and they'll give you an alert so you never miss an amazing deal like Europe or Japan for less than 300 bucks round trip. And uh, the, all on quality airlines as well. No kickbacks from airlines. Their only goal is to send their members great deals. Scott's Cheap Flights, right, Dawson? Join for free at scottscheapflights.com slash Adam and never overpay for flights again. Again, join for free at scottscheapflights.com slash Adam, scottscheapflights.com slash Adam. All right. Bizarre. <laughs> it's weird, right? We're Very. watching David Brenner. He's wearing a, a, a baseball undershirt. <laughs> He's holding... <laughs> Not a sandwich, an actual... Tuna fish, I guess. Is it between a piece of bread? Is, is there a it? piece of bread oh, on top? Oh, look at you, yeah. Yes. Nobody ever sees you eat tuna fish. Wow. It's, okay. and, and it's like another comedy observations that confuse the reader. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's, it looks like someone f mocked it up and photoshopped and just kind of went, this is a rough premise we're right. working at. And I always want... You have to go through, I've done this process a million times. You have to go through this person mm -hmm. and that person and everyone right. weighs in like right. this. Anyone raise their hand and go, I, I, I it's it. not funny. Maybe I, in I that era, like, there, there was no, there weren't that levels of damage control. Right. right? Or it's just major emperor's new clothes syndrome. This is, uh, well, David and Scott Carter, wait. Not uh, not Scott Carter. Jack. Jack, Carter. Jack Carter. Scott Carter's the late night guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they'll both be missed. Fun piece of trivia. Missed. Yeah. Fun piece of trivia. I just uh, was reminded of looking at Wikipedia. I think it was, was the first episode you might have worked for on air episode. Prince was supposed to be the musical guest. Dropped out at the last minute. It was replaced by... Blues Traveler. Blues Traveler. Wow. Prince was in a fight with his record company. It's when he changed his name <laughs> to a symbol. Right. Mm -hmm. He was angry. So he dropped out that week. Yeah, it was so a we week up. Yeah, we yeah. wake up. So we got Blues Traveler instead. 
well, from Prince. Great live band. Yes. All right, we'll take a, a quick break. We'll be back. We'll do the news with Hughes right after this. Give me the news with Grad. News with Gino Grad. Breaking viral. Weird crime protest politics. Give me news with Gino Grad. Stuff they saw on TMZ. Joe Biden. Kamala. Big news with Gina Gino Grad. The news with Gina Grad. Well, let's start with something uh, uplifting and positive. Competing in the GK US Classic, the four time Olympic gold medalist uh, Simone Biles became the first woman to successfully land the Yurchenko double pike in competition on the vault. It's only been performed by men up till now. And before I show you, I'm going to tell you what it is so you know what you're looking at. That's just some Kill Bill shit right there. Seriously. That's like ten- Tarantino. Seriously. <laughs> it's a round off onto a springboard, then a back handspring onto a vault, then two back flips through the air to stick a standing landing. Um, we're going to look at it, but uh, furthermore, reports also explain that the double pike wasn't valued proportionately with its difficulty and rarity, in part to counteract Biles' dominance. So they had to kind of oh, like they're adjusting the pull her back a little mm. or she would just dominate. Um, mm. Even Biles herself tweeted, I'm sorry, but I can't believe I competed a double pike on a vault. This is what it looked like. It has been absolutely unbelievable to watch every single time. Here we go. Wow. Wow. Amazing. It makes me think about, you know, we talk, you say, you know, from time to time, we didn't know that was possible until someone did it. And now, like, you know, kids are skateboarding, doing that kind of stuff all the time. Like, that's very... That's all X Games is. Right. Like, you didn't know you could do a flip on a motorcycle. Now 14-year-olds do flips on motorcycles. Yes. And so it's funny because I don't know. I, I can't, I've i heard, but I don't remember, like, any of her routines at all. Like, But you you think of someone like Mary Lou Retton. Mm-hmm. It's like what she was doing at the time was incredible, but, like, Simone Biles in 2021, we didn't even know that was possible. Well, you say they're, like, grading her on a curve or something? Yeah. They're waiting her score. Oh, how yeah. do you like that affirmative action? Yeah. <laughs> How's it feel? It's the ultimate compliment. Yeah. You're so good. We have to hold you back. Yeah. Yeah. It stings a little, doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know. I hope she takes it as a compliment. Um, they should. But they. Who oh. now? Hmm? Who they? Asians. Oh. <laughs> got to figure this out. Gymnasts. You got that uh, man show. Yeah, we have, that, we have the, the action figure frat. <laughs> What's it called? Fraternity uh, action figures? Yeah, fraternity action heroes or something heroes. like that. <laughs> fraternity action heroes. Fraternity action heroes. Five tough guys, one tough fraternity. Smitty, Wojo, Big Dave, Pooter, and the Toad. Fraternity action heroes. I'm the evil Dean, and I'm going to shut your house down if you don't pass <laughs> tomorrow's exam. Forget you, Dean. We're going cruising in my dad's beamer to pick up some ecstasy for our party with the cat <laughs> Collect all five so you and your friends can act out classic fraternity rituals. <laughs> fraternity action heroes. Okie okay, cookie sold separately. It's pretty brilliant. It's great. Yeah, it's a funny bit. I you used to have to talk the moms into like, what's my son auditioning exactly. for? Ah, oh, it's a kids playhouse yeah. thing. With Toys. The, well, and that's why, like in my favorite one, in the karate one, you had to cut the kid. You you had to do a lot of those scenes without the kids actually there. Yeah, that's my favorite one. Yeah, that was uh, Black Belt Adam. I think <laughs> a Black Belt Adam. I had to say horrible things, but <laughs> to little kids I, I, and geese. I couldn't do it with the kids in front of me, right. and I did a pretty good job of. Cutting to them and cutting yeah. kind of me, I couldn't really see that one. they weren't in the no. room. Well, Max, now you have to find Black <laughs> Belt Adam. My experience <laughs> casting kids for uncomfortable comedy is 
if you find a family that's moved from Florida for pilot season, mm-hmm. they're gold. They'll yeah. do anything. They have no morality. They do a snuff film. Anything. Right. Take him. Anything. They don't care. That's very, very and They astute. live at the Oakwood, if that yeah, still exists. Yeah, well, Oakwood. now it's called the Avalon. Oh. It's called, but it's the Oakwood. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I noticed a place where Corey, one of the Corys died. Yeah, Corey Haim. Oh, is that right? So. Yeah. I think so. I always ask for that room. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm local. That's how, that's how into it I am. <laughs> well, while he's looking that up, public schools in New York and L.A. will fully reopen in the fall with in-person learning five days a week, said officials on Monday. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio made the announcement about the nation's biggest school system Monday morning on Morning Joe. De Blasio said you can't have a full recovery without full, strong schools. Sorry, I'm going to sneeze. The superintendent of L.A. Oh, Excuse me. You allergic to good news? <laughs> superintendent of Los Angeles schools, Austin Butner, made a similar announcement Monday. Now, about 70 parents protested outside of LUSD headquarters on Sunday, demanding a full reopening. And in L.A., some issues will still need to be ironed out with the teachers union. But they're hoping for that same full opening in September. I was talking to my kids and they're done with school. And I'm like, you just start. Didn't we just start yeah. school? Mm-hmm. Like, no, we're a lot done. of graduation balloons we're in people's done yards. next week. Yeah. It's like you never even went. Nope. Their re- the relationship with attendance is s- sparse at best. at best. Like it's just sort of like, what are we? Why are you guys sleeping? What day is it? Ah, we're doing a thing on the phone. I mean, could you imagine? Like when you're a kid, it's like you gotta go to school. Get up. Yeah. Get up. The go. Bell rang like, at eight twenty five. Like, there's so much talk about yeah. it. And it's just like, eh, catch as catch can. And it makes me sad because what would have been better than to hear like you can do school from bed? But ultimately, like. I don't know. I wouldn't want to have changed it. I'm glad I showed up and got to do stuff and see my friends and, you know, go out to lunch and do all the things you're supposed to do when you're in high school. Everything sounds better and bad, but I don't think it's like eating yeah. <laughs> oh. and school and Working. work. Everything sounds better, but big picture. Not good. Not good. I don't think. Like, what if we weren't talking about kids? What if we were just talking about Kodiak bears? <laughs> I mean, they can do it from their cave. Just let them lay there. <laughs> we'll bring the food in on Grubhub. And everyone's going, are you kidding? You're going to kill those bears. You're going to kill them. Have you, are you bothered by these parents who post all the time? I've never said they'll put, my kid just graduated Phi Beta Kappa. I've never quite understood, is it, like, I know it must be prestigious, yeah. but it's like, I want to go, really? My kid graduated quid pro quo. <laughs> like, just throw out a Latin term. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is, I don't even know, is it a fraternity? I don't get it. Brian, I feel like you'd know. Uh, I was not involved in that, but it's an honor society that you achieve a certain level. I too. see. And yeah. it's at every university? I think so. That's a good question, yeah. actually. Uh-huh. I'm pretty sure, but I don't Couldn't know. So it's like honor this. roll or graduate Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honors. Honor society or something. Yeah. I, I go with Rhodes Scholar. Yeah, yeah that's more I impressive. I don't even really know what that is, but it sounds better. <laughs> it does. Mm-hmm. Lindsay Lohan is returning to acting. Uh, she's going to star in a yet-to-be-titled Netflix holiday rom-com, according to Variety, in this holiday flick. Now, tell me if this sounds like a movie that's already been made can't remember what year, but I'm going to say late 80s. Tell me if this plot sounds familiar. Lindsay plays a newly engaged, spoiled hotel heiress who gets amnesia after a skiing accident and finds herself in the care of a handsome blue-collar lodge owner and his precocious daughter in the days leading up to Christmas. Anybody? That's anybody? overboard. Thank you. That's overboard. Except it it's set in Christmas. <laughs> the rest of the cast hasn't been announced. The movie uh, starts production in November. Now, her last starring role was a low-budget horror movie, Among the Shadows that was shot in 2015 and released in 2019, and she broke through at 11, starring in the reboot of The Parent Trap in '98, but been kind of out of the game for a while. She got to just skip forward to porn right now. Yeah. I thought she already still, had. Like, well, well, there's good money on the well, table. So you don't get into right. this in your 50s. They pull that's, back a lot of those yeah, offers. That's right. She hosted SNL for sure. Was that your era? It was not my era. <laughs> I remember no. she was there at some point. Oh, right. good news, Gina. We have Adam teaches karate. Oh, this is my favorite. To uh, to the young to the young kids. Oh. I remember being hoarse after. That's all I remember. <laughs> you really this left this one all on the field. Is being. Uh, it's being hoarse, yeah. Show me. My name? Sensei Adam. I am going to teach you the art of karate. Rear front kick. Left, right. Cabbage Patch, Eagle Death Claw. Let me give you a real world scenario. 
Let's say you're in the milk line at school and bully comes up behind you once you're change. Let's say you're at the beach with your best girl and guy comes up and kicks sand in your face. Let's say you're at a bar tilting a couple of cold ones after work with your buddy and some drunken townie thinks you've been making eyes at his bitch. What are you gonna do? Pounded on him. You're at a cockfight, and a couple of the Tijuana locals think you've been winning just a little too much. <laughs> Let's say you're on the street and a bad guy pulls a knife on you. But he, but he, uh, but he holds it more forward. Right. <laughs> and now he does that thing where, uh, where he taunts you by throwing it back and forth from one hand to the other, but a little smaller, a little, a little smaller, but faster. Huzzah! You were at a strip club and one of the Bettys just told the bouncer you gave her the magic thumb. <laughs> you cut away to confuse boy. <laughs> this one's for my brother. Hey! You're a Nam on a recon mission up the Mekong Delta. Next thing you know, you step on a little present from Charlie. It's a bouncing Betty. You got a heartbeat to react, or you're going to be wearing your sack like so much aftershave. <laughs> See you in hell. Ah! You thought you're going to make some extra scratch doing gay porn. Turns out you just got the lead in a snuff film. Now you got a ball gag in your mouth, and you're in a basement somewhere in Pomona. What do you do? What's up? What's up? It's the best one. The cutaways of the confused kids are pretty great. <laughs> the eyebrows go I like up. it. It's funny. It's, it's really, really funny. funny bit. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how to do all that shit in front of the kids, and I just realized. I, I like just Vietnam. Go. You got yeah. everything in there. <laughs> We're going back in time. <laughs> the magic <laughs> thumb. <laughs> you thought you were make some scratch doing gay porn. <laughs> oh, my God. He's got the lead role in the snuff film. It was real good. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it's the same thing you talk about. It's like you start off with it's normal and milk money and, and you throw a few and, in that like seem a little out of left field. Yeah. Yeah, and then you just keep going until it gets uh, I love it. Us. Yeah. I remember we sh shut that in Reseda. That sounds about right. And I was hoarse afterward. <laughs> That's all I remember. <laughs> well, there's going to be another Willy Wonka movie, and this time he will be played by, do you know, Brian? I heard about this, yeah. Timothy Chalamet. Right. The 25-year-old mm. will play a young version of Wonka in a prequel, uh, prequel to the classic Roald Dahl story. Oh, thank God. Before he got interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about this eccentric billionaire before he was anything. Well, isn't the whole thing that like he was deprived of candy? I don't know. We'll find out. Deadline says the movie will focus on Wonka's adventures before opening his most famous chocolate factory. Sources say the flick will mark the first time Timothy will go to show off his singing and dancing skills with several musical numbers. Um, uh, of course, Gene Wilder starred in the original in 1971, Johnny Depp's version in 2005. But What's nothing's better than the original. Um, was there something where Tarantino bought Gene Wilder's old house? Or am I making yeah, that up? Somebody, or am I just trying to connect, no. our, bring our show home? <laughs> it wasn't Gene Wilder. Uh, it wasn't Quentin Tarantino. It was um, Elon Musk. I oh, think. Elon oh. Musk. Ah, it's an eccentric yeah. Now, Raul Dahl's been exposed as a vicious anti-Semite. It's true. He so hopefully in this version, the young Willy Wonka will see him excluding Jewish children right. from the factory. Right. Yeah. I never really was into the whole the whole thing. The Charlie and the Chocolate yeah, Factory. Yeah, just I just um, when I, 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 it's well, like the Phantom Toll Booth or something. Like all these stories from my How youth. How old were you in seventy seven? Old enough to know better. <laughs> or seventy one. So I don't know. Seventy one. I, I was. I I, I looked at. I, I Lord of the Rings and like all stuff. It all just felt too weird and fantastical to me. Like I I was into like. You know, gone in sixty seconds. Right. I'm well, like car I can see a yeah. young Adam Carolla watching Willy Wonka and really feeling like they're rubbing your nose in it. Yeah, the candy was pretty good though. Oh yeah, they did yeah. Willy Wonka candy. The and oh, they actually, there were the actual Wonka candy. bars. Yeah. They act. They were smart enough to realize, like, yeah. hey man, 
forget about just the movies. Right. Like right. We should sell the shit at the movie theaters that the movie's playing at. And they came out with a whole line mm -hmm. of... Willy Wonka candy. And the Scrum Diddly Umptious bar. And they're basically kind of a peanut butter cup in a different shape or something like Never that, as one. I recall. Yeah, they had yeah, Oompa either. Loompas that were peanut butter. Yeah. But they were good. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds great. One more, Gina Okay. Grant. Well, you know how um, a while back I told you that a notorious cartel uh, member got popped because somebody saw his tattoo on his arm from his oh, cooking, cooking channel show, on oh, YouTube. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we have one sort of akin to that. A drug dealer's fingerprints have been analyzed by police when he shared a photo of his hand holding a block of cheese. That has landed him in prison for 13 years. And we have the picture that started it all. 39-year-old uh, Carl Stewart from Liverpool sent a picture of, uh, of an, on an encrypted device of a block of Stilton cheese he found in a British grocery store. And the photograph was discovered by police who analyzed the fingerprints that are very clear in this picture. Authority says Stewart's love of Stilton cheese led to his arrest. He was jailed on Friday after pleading oh. guilty to conspiracy to supply cocaine, heroin, MDMA, and ketamine, and to transferring criminal property, according to police. Wow. Well, it's nice to have the cops doing their copping, because yeah. I was thinking about Ted Kaczynski. Like, we could never find him, and then his brother, like, turned him, turned him in, in. Right. right. I mean, we, we went on a multi-year nationwide manhunt man came up with zero and at a certain point his fucking brother had to just drop a dime on right. him otherwise we he recognized his writing oh, is that like, what oh, it that's is? my brother yeah they because they were publishing those crazy letters and he goes that's my brother's voice wow oh really yeah it was all this crazy anti-environment mm -hmm. it was like envir environmental extremism like yeah yeah he was he was blowing up college professors, which at the time I disagreed with. <laughs> now, I have a slightly different take so on it. You know the sad thing about this? Guy you're yeah. like, in prison, there's the pecking order. Right. Like the un only thing worse than child molesters is prisoners who are into high-end cheese. Oh, it's like yeah. a fromage. They're, gonna, they're yeah, getting they it. I didn't even think of that. Wing. Yeah, yeah. There. There's the chomo and now the chimo. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I this is bound. I mean, it's going to happen more and more. I mean, you know, uh, people filming themselves yeah, storming the Capitol and stuff like that. Like, makes it easy on be everybody. Pretty easy, yep. and um, we don't really need so many of the cops as we grew up with. We need folks that played video games yes. and studied computers and know how to edit yes. and do stuff just sitting around and cubicles images. just staring at everything. Right. That was the biggest Enhance. biggest yep. breakthrough of every 80s yep. cop show. Enhanced. Yep. Enhanced. 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 I'm sitting home like mind blown. Like the picture's getting bigger. <laughs> and Didn't more Matthew clear. Broderick almost cause a world war? Yes, war yes. games. War games. <laughs> war games. All right. Let me hit uh, Bam B when running a business. HR issues can kill you. Wrongful termination suits, uh, minimum wage and labor regulations, and HR manager salaries average. 70K a year. Bambi, that's B-A-M-B-E-E, -E, created specifically for small businesses. Get a dedicated HR manager, craft HR policy, and maintain your compliance all for just 99 bucks a month. Uh, your dedicated HR manager is available by phone, email, or real-time chat. From onboarding to terminations, they customize your policies to your business. Just 99 bucks month to month, no hidden fees, cancel anytime. You didn't start your business, spend a bunch of time with the HR compliance. Let Bambi get you help. Get your free HR audit today, right, Dawson? Go to Bambi.com slash Adam right now to schedule your free HR audit. That's Bambi.com slash Adam, spelled BAM to the B-E-E dot -E com slash Adam. All right, Gina Grad, let's bring it home. You got it. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Come on, she's 300 pounds. You Gina, Gina That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, last but not least, there's Hyundai Tucson. Hyundai Tucson, all new Tucson, completely reimagined, resulting in an SUV loaded with innovations inside and out. You go to Hyundai.com to find out more. Hugh Fink. Yeah on uh, the writing in the workshops for them. And you should go to the website, hughfink.com, to sign up and learn from a seasoned, some say grizzled, mostly <laughs> cagey, 
veteran of the uh, sketch writing game. And All true. It, it's Tuesday, June 8th. It's 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific. Good to see you, Hugh. Good to see you, Adam. It's great being here. I uh, I agree. Come back again soon. Love it. Oh, uh, Corolla Drinks, 818 Rye Whiskey. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a tasting at the Venetian this Saturday, 5 to 7 p.m. Lynette and the gang will be there. Vegas. Oh, in Vegas. Sorry, yeah. I should have mm-hmm. put that in. Go to amcurl.com for all the info. Live shows coming up everywhere. Golden, Colorado, and Anchorage, and Raleigh, North Carolina, and Royal Oak, Michigan, and Kansas City, Woo! Missouri. So until next time, Adam Curl for Hugh Fink and Gina Grad and Bald Ryan say it. Mahalo. That was goddamn good radio.